Oh, you boys. Martin Maloney here, the one and only. Uh, I just passed an hour and a half trying to get the kids to bed. And uh, it's typical, it's one of those nights where it's like, I really need to get, need you to be good and go to bed tonight. And it was the only time they wouldn't go to bed. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, basically, tonight's episode, I'm going to start off talking about, there's a couple of questions, and feel free to ask here in the, in the comment section about how to make it in the film and television world. So for, for the, the explanation of the picture that I used today for the live stream, that was in Kofi's gaff back in 2007. And that was, uh, <laughs> that was about a week after we'd picked the mushies in the Hardy Books webisodes. So we went to Galway and had a fucking great, great time. So Dave Weld, actually fair play to Weldine, he um, he asked me during the week, he was asking about getting into acting and getting into TV. First of all, I'll, I'll say it's not the easiest. I mean, it's it's a job for the most foolhardiest of bastards. It's not easy, but it's uh, it's got its high points, it's got its low points. So from a practical point of view, if you want to get into acting, it's a little bit like the, uh, the chicken and the egg. In order to get an agent who gets you work, you need a showreel. And in order to get your show real, you have to do bits, uh, you, know, you have to do performances. And, you know, you, you, there's two ways of doing this. You either do what we did with Hardy Books and you grow your own audience and you, you know, you, you, one thing leads to another and then you commission your own work. And even at that, even like even the fact that I'd had like 10 years of experience doing my own show and I was a very capable actor and I did have some acting background beforehand, because I'd only done the one character, it kind of pigeonholed me in in a, a certain kind of role, let's say. So then, it's all it all comes down to gatekeepers. You know, you've got to impress the people in the industry. So the first thing you're going to need is a show reel, and then the other thing is you got to be good. Now, something that we ruffled a few feathers with was Hardy Books when we started. Was maybe we we kind of ruined the mystique of of all these, uh, say, trained thespians, Stanislavski, method acting merchants, such as, you know, I remember hearing a story from from a, a fellow actor from Galway called Duncan Lacroix, and he's in, he's actually in the same agency as I am. He's in Outlander, a couple, and, and he's a really, really sound guy. I was talking to him in... Spanish Arch in Galway back in 2007 and we were talking about acting classes and, and this kind of stuff. He said he went to an acting class where he had to be taught in a module one Saturday how to crawl out of his own belly button, which is complete fucking shite. Basically, if you're going to have... First of all, it sounds like it's the obvious thing to do, but first of all, some people either have it or they don't have it. And if they don't have it, then maybe they know the right people and they put them into the show for example stateside uh he goes around saying i'm a top actor but we had to have literally the most frustrating war of words with rte to keep stateside in the show because they were like he can't act he's the only one in who can't act and i was like but that's what makes it so funny is the fact that he can't act and uh so yeah with that in mind you've got a You've got to have it or you don't have it, right? So if you do have it, then you need to start finding work. So the best place to start off is obviously short films and students. If you're going to do this yourself, you need to assemble a crew of like-minded individuals. L lucky for me, I had toured off and I had some sort of education in Ballyfermot back when I was about 19 to 20, which was all right. And, uh, yeah, I didn't really, I knew I wanted to get into making TV and film, but like the, like the rest of you who are asking, where do you start? There's a couple of different things you could do now. First of all, if I if, if you want a, a backstory in actually in Hardy Books and how that came to be, I'll tell you that. So it's good to see you. Sorry, I got, I got stuck in there about saying hello to everyone. It's got to be fucking serious there. Um, but I'll, I'll chat to you in a minute. So Hardy Books started in 2007. And Tordoff had gone to Ballyferm and 
to do his THND in film and television, or I think it was television. And um, he said to me one day when I was coming back from Galway, he's like, Martin, how about, would you like to do some characters and I'll cut them together and make a show out of them? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I went over to his house one Sunday after I came back from Galway and I sat there in front of the character, in front of the ca- camcorder and I, and I threw a few different characters into into the mix. So I threw in a lad I went to school with, a bit of my dad, and then just lads I'd seen and, and stories that I'd heard from people I'd met in the pub. So the original first go of Hardy Books that got other people involved was called The Tale of a Hardy Book. And I don't know whatever happened to this. It might be on Tordoff's old Sony Vio laptop, but I was given a DVD of this, which I misplaced as well. But what it was was basically me walking around Charlestown like, you know, I'd be on the phone and I'd pick up the phone and phone books and I'd be like, I want that fucking money now, man. I want that fucking money now. Fuck you, so. And I put the, and I slammed the phone down. He was like, who was that? I was like, ah, just a mate of mine. And then there was like me walking around town and then me back in in, in his living room. And I was talking like this going, uh, you know, like I was off, I was in Chicago there for a few years, man. I was going to marry an American bird. I had 550 guests at the wedding. The wedding was up to 100,000. I'd made a good few bob like when I was working on the sites and fucking wedding went, didn't go through then. Fucking walked off back in, back in Mayo like. So what happened was um, we started with this first DVD. Chris cut it together and he went to college and he said to the other lads he was in college with, do you want to come down and make a demo? So in April 2007, that's when we made the very first Bebo demos that you see on Bebo with Mikey Salmon jumping into the car and like, watch the fucking dog, man, watch the dog's tail. So I said, I was living with Owen at the time in Galway and me and Owen, like we would just be hanging around, just having a laugh, doing impressions and, and like playing out scenes. And I was like, Owen is one of the funniest dudes I've ever met in my life. And Owen had never, like we'd spoke about TV. Again, me and Owen didn't really know where do you begin. And any of you who are trying to break into this now have a great advantage because everyone has access to relatively cheap broadcasting equipment. You can technically film on your phone and edit. I mean, like that's what your man Rory Stories is doing. And whether you like his stuff or not, he's managed to make, what, like 350,000 uh, likes on Facebook and he's probably done very well for himself out of it. I doubt he's ever going to get cast in any serious roles and that's not me being a, a player hater or anything. It's just that much like us, we, we we rose to fame on YouTube and compared to the traditional institution of the TV world, we would be seen as outsiders and also the fact that the stuff we were coming out with was very much like a documentary. We didn't want to kind of dumb anything down. And plus, I was a wild dude anyway at the time. I I was certainly a lot more crazy than I was now. And and that was always my style in school. Couldn't keep my mouth shut. And um, that was always like a bit of house parties or we'd be sitting around houses in Galway watching Family Guy or something. I'd come out with some sort of outrageous statement and everyone would be quiet and then towed off would just be in the other side of the room going, so like I I would always be that kind of way. So the other lads basically at the time, Tommy Boo was working in a in a carpet warehouse out in near Renmore in Galway or Ballyban, and Owen was working in Vivo across from Cuba, in Galway the the old the defunct nightclub. So we just had this magical mix of characters, and on top of that, then Tordoff had you know that me and Tordoff had had sat watching these. The various comedy shows, such as Spaced, Peep Show, Alan Partridge, Father Ted, The Office, uh, Trailer Park Boys. So we were, we always knew since we were kids, we watched like Adam and Joe show and all this kind of stuff. We always knew since we were kids, it was what we wanted to do. I, I was the first one to go to college, but then afterwards I ended up coming to Sweden. And I was just talking to Sasha, the guy who brought me to Sweden, and, and he's on about coming on to have a little chat later on. So for me, my life took a very different trajectory. I was going to go back to college in 2003, but I ended up going to Sweden instead. I partied and had a great time, met my ex-girlfriend, and then that took me, oh, Patrick, thanks for the super chat, baby boy. 
Um, so yeah, so what happened was um, I ended up in a two-year relationship with my ex-girlfriend, Sarah, in Stockholm. That went tits up. And then after that, I went to New York for about three months and I was hanging out with a guy called Justin Masler, who I met in EOS in Greece. Now, Justin, unfortunately, had a he had schizophrenia and it seemed to be getting worse. So when I lived with him, uh, Justin had enough money. He had a, a broadcast quality camera, like a Panasonic worth $5,000. And Justin had this internet feud with uh, Tucker Max, the, the guy, the womanizer fella who... Uh, who wrote that, I hope they serve beer in hell book. So him and Justin were fighting. And one night he had his camera nicked off him and he got beaten up. That's this little side quest. So I live with this guy. He was like, Martin, do you want to come over to Stockholm or to, to New York? And we'll make it like, we'll make a TV show and get famous. And I was like, brilliant. And when I was 22, you know, I was, I was like, do you want to be famous? Uh, or like, whether it's through music or acting, the concept of fame is like nebulous nebulous kind of concept of getting recognition for my personality and talent let's say so i went over to new york and it became quite apparent after a few weeks that justin was unfortunately a bit unhinged so we made it we made a we made one video over there well actually the first time we went into a place called bay ridge where we're living in new york and we brought in a full uh, full camera with a with lights on it and everything into a pub one saturday night at about 12 o'clock so I like guys walking up to me and go, yo, who the fuck are you, man? Yeah, where are you from? I'm from, I'm from Ireland. Yeah, my mom is from Ireland. Where's she from? Donegal. I'm like, Donegal? You mean Donegal? Yeah. So I ended up getting a going out with a girl who I met that night for for the duration of the rest of my stay in New York. So uh that was like that was it. Nothing really happened. Uh, I went back to Liverpool and to work in on my uncle's shed with my dad, which was mental crack. Uh but it was kind of like a bit depressing because I'd gone full circle. I'd gone from New York to New Brighton. And I think that the peak of the depression of that kind of anticlimax of Stockholm, interrailing, uh, New York, then back to the place I was born. And it was, I was in a nightclub in New Brighton called La Playa's. And I was listening to two guys arguing over a fiver outside a chip shop that was in the basement of the nightclub beside the toilet. And I was just like, how the hell have I gone from New York to New Brighton. Like, is this it? So, yeah, I went back to Ireland and then that happened with Chris. We did the demo and then we got Owen and Tom, or Owen and Salmon involved. And funny enough, me and Chris were discussing, like, oh, wouldn't it be great to get someone like Salmon in it? And we were like, why don't we just get Salmon? So we asked Salmon and it was, uh, hey, Mikey, would you like to be in a show that we're doing? He's like, uh, yeah. So it's like sound. We got Mikey Salmon on board to play the hitchhiker. So the the name Hardy Books came from a round table discussion we were having because that that there was a real kind of a word that older lads would use about about young fellas who were like Hardy Books around town. Oh, that fella, he's a Hardy Book. No, you'd want to watch out for him. So the name itself just became like a something that was everyone could relate to around around Swinford. Let's say. So we did the demo. We put it up on Bebo. And back in the Bebo days, we got a lot of a lot of these hearts and people were sharing it. And as Peter Gamley was saying, it was interesting to to get his take on it on the podcast at that time. And he was saying, oh, man, this thing was on Bebo. And we'd like, we'd stop a house party, put on this flash box. And so that that's that started. And then in, sep- in October, late September or late October um, 2007, we did another demo. And we got my brother-in-law, Mike, over to help. And he, he really loved what we did with the first demo. And then Chris basically sat on that for about a year and, and nearly a year to the day, we, re- we, we kind of did a re-edit and broke it up into three different parts and put that up on YouTube. And this is the thing, back then in like 2007, 2008, YouTube was re- re- relatively uh, new and as was Facebook. So what I did at the time is, and what the other lads did was, you know, we, uh, Pete who plays French Toast who just came back from around the world trip and we got Kofi in because we were living with Kofi. And, you know, we got we had more lads from Ballyferma College came and helped us. And it was just a really fun blend of nice, nice people. So 
I knew when when I saw the final edit, I was like, this is going to be huge. And we just be- believed in it so much that everyone was like, I just hit everyone I knew on Facebook and I was like, you got to check this out. This is our latest um, comedy show. And people started sharing it. And before we knew it, like we had, uh, si- I've got to give credit to Simon Keenan, who is our original cameraman. He came up to me and Chris and he, he said that, he was working on the Podge and Rod show and one of the guys in Podge and Rod show had mentioned Storyland, which was a competition RTE had done for professional and amateur filmmakers. So they would give, I think it was 7,000 euro per episode, if I'm not mistaken. And then you had to do a seven minute clip. So when we were going for the, for the, uh, the interview, we got into the top 20, which we didn't think we'd even have a chance of doing. And then when myself and Chris and Mike went in for the the face to face meeting with RTE, one of the other guys who I can't remember the name of the show they were doing, they just had their audition or their pitch, and we were like, "Oh, class, man! Yeah, how did it go?" And he's like, "Oh, it went well, it went well." And he go, and we were like, "What have you got there?" And he goes, "Oh, this this is some snuff." So he he was like putting snuff up his nose, and me and Chris were like, "Oh, can we get some as well?" So we went took some of this snuff and then immediately afterwards our eyes started watering before going in like a pair of fucking idiots and trying not to sneeze. And in some ways it kind of helped us take the edge off the nerves. So we were really enthusiastic. Uh, We got the, we much to our surprise, we got the, the commission for the top 10. So this was very exciting for not only us, but for people in Swinford as well. And uh, all the people who were on it from the beginning, like so many people were like, Oh, can we come in? And we were, bringing everyone in you know it was it was uh we we were very welcoming to anybody who's showing any interest and was good crack we were like yeah we'll find a place for you uh and funny enough with big mick i remember showing him the stuff on bebo and i remember like in my mother's house i was showing him on the computer and he, and he just sat there watching it going yeah hmm. and that's comedy is it so he was a bit skeptical from the beginning and then when Archie, funny enough, when Archie got on board in Foamy Nights, we were like, hey, Huge, do you want to come in and be in Hardy Books? And he's like, I oh, know, I love it. And I have I've even a, 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 a walk for the character that I've, that I've started doing. And the first time I did the, the show with, with my uncle Eugene, who plays Mick, I just couldn't stop laughing because it was just so funny to see. My dad's brother was now in the Hardy Books with us and just being a, a really funny legend so it, yeah we went strength to strength we ended up winning the storyline competition and we went and actually had a meeting with warpex in sheffield who were they did uh this is england and uh you know that kind of stuff we didn't really hear anything back then from them because we went to rt came with an offer for series one so we went with for series one we went to RTE, we did that. They were a little bit kind of, they were very restrictive. Like initially, they, they were getting in house RTE guys, and some of them were, you know, they just didn't get what we were about. Like there was one guy, I won't mention his name, but I used to call him the Praying Mantis. He was a big, tall guy. He was like this, had the camera on and be like, caught. And it, it was just, it, it wasn't mobile like the other lads. We, like, we, we, and eventually, we got to have our original cameraman back, and we got JJ Rolf in. Fair play to JJ. He, came as a replacement and he got it from immediately. Uh, and it was, you know, so yeah, that was basically my journey in terms of Hardy Books and where that went from. Um, but if you're starting out as an actor or you have any ambition to be an actor, my advice would be start a, a, a group with your with friends or acquaintances that you can get on with that you have a shared desire to create and rather than trying to create for the sake of, of making it big, just do something that you know yourself is funny and you, you enjoy. Uh, and if that is the case and you, you've got, let's say, you've got your crew together, you've got your script together, um, you have some kind of a budget. You don't really need a big budget these days because you can basically, you've got DSLR cameras, you have even phones. You know, some of these, some of the phones that you've got now have a better resolution than like a Sony Z1 would have had 10 years ago. So um, 
uh, yeah, how much of the early stuff was improvised? Most of it was improvised. Uh, what, what I would do is I would write a loose script with certain gags and lines in it, and we would just turn up on the day. And so there was sometimes we'd be filming the, the webisodes and we'd be like, what do we do now? And then we just like mess around and throw some little events in. And then we just edit it together. And I think that was the most important part of the process was Chris was very good and very quick with putting the edits together. And I had a, a great eye for it. So the two of us would, would oversee the, the editing process and then it would all come together nicely. So I'd say like, you know, throw in an image of Pat Kenny here and some sound effects, you know, this kind of stuff. And that, that's what th those little bits in the middle is what gave the early stuff the, the pace. But then for some reason, Artie had kind of, they, they wanted to, so like Artie and Mike had kind of agreed to take out those, I had a girlfriend and she was so blue. And you'd have like King of the Town, Mikasa, Consor and Wavin Pipes and Mitzi's, which I really thought was a, a great bit of, I thought that just broke it up and gave extra little comedy flashes to keep it paced throughout. So, yeah, but basically, if you're going to go down the route of trying to be an actor, what you need to do is just do short films and get your showreel together. Once you have a solid showreel, then you approach agents. Now, agents are very difficult people to take you on because it's, like I say, it's a kind of like a vicious circle. You have to have some sort of recognized role in... In a, in, a, in a kind of a big production speaking part. Um, there, some people have, you know, they've, they've gone on to film set as extras. Like I, I've heard a lot of stories about people who went into Vikings and they were, they were like constantly hired as extras. And then they were like, they got to know the cast and the crew. And then they got put into the, the production and were given lines and then, you know, went from there. Um, it, a lot of it is who, you know, as well. A lot of it is about networking and, and even even the people you do know, I find that it's difficult to just ring people up and you, you've got to know what it is you want. You've got to know exactly what you're asking for. And, and you'll find that a lot of people these days, especially people don't really have the, I think, so social media and, and instant communications, it's just, it, it's just made people too busy. Like if someone says to me, oh, I've got a script, could you read a script? I'm like, I just haven't got the fucking time to sit down and read a script. I mean, I haven't even got, time to write my own stuff at the moment so uh do i still speak to owen yeah i was talking to him tonight actually i was, I was seeing if he wanted to be on this so uh yeah uh, prank calls were also how rubber bandits start basically well yeah that, that's that's kind of how we start as well it's a shame you were killed in vikings i was excited to see you in it cheers connor yeah vikings was, was, was brilliant uh I, I remember like i had to do this i had to do the audition as a uh, captain viking and i was like yeah, hopefully I'll get out of that one. So I get in the part and my agent rings me up and he goes, Martin, yeah, uh, you're going to have to go in. they are going to pay you to go in for a day and you're going to have to do prosthetics. And I was like, prosthetics? Why is this? And he goes, yeah, there'll be some damage to your character. And I was like, oh, great. So I went in and they like, they poured silicone over my entire head, took a, a complete uh, replica of my face. Uh, it was a really, really... Uh, the, the cast and crew on Vikings were fantastic. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed my time on Vikings, actually. And it... It is a shame that I was in it, like I was only in it for a bit. Uh, there was a lot of people saying, oh, Martin, have you met Mo Dunford yet? Mo, he's, he's, he's a big fan of the show, man. He's always talking about Hardy Books. And it was nice to see Irish people on the crew who who were big fans of Hardy Books as well. And for me, being on Vikings was, was nice because I went from doing extreme comedy to like extreme drama. So it was a nice, I've, I've got to chop that up and stick it on the show reel. David Weld, hey, do you remember filming Vikings in a place called Hollywood in Willow? That's where I live. Uh, is it near Roundwood, David? Because uh, I, I think I was around there somewhere, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I won't answer that one, Jack, because uh, your man knows the crack, but uh, I, won't be, I, won't be, I won't pretend to hear the school. Uh, how come the Hardy Books movie isn't on Netflix anymore? That's to do with... Uh, that's nothing to do with us. That's basically Universal on the rights to that, and there was probably a certain amount of time negotiated between them and Netflix. So it's nothing to do with us. It's just that Netflix will take things on to a certain time limit. And then, then uh, once that time limit, they might, they might decide to, to reinstate it again later on. 
Do you find it hard to escape the Eddie Durkin shadow? Like, do people constantly dismiss your other work and just talk about Durkin? No, not really, actually. And and since since I've started, you know, doing the podcast out, out of character and doing do, doing these live streams, uh, and I've also I was in Gold. I had a couple of scenes in Gold. I was with um, Maisie Williams in that film. Uh, I was in the Damon and Ivor film as well. Uh, I was in a couple of other things. So it's uh, it, it'd be nice to. Nice to do a cut just to get some other bits in because, like, I can I can pretty much do fucking anything really. But it was very frustrating to be to be typecast in the Hardy Books role. Who decided to put Jerry Ryan at it? Uh, <laughs> probably me and Chris. It probably came after like a conversation. <laughs> That's the one where I had it, Sky Boy, Sky Boy. Hardy Boys changed my life for the better. I can't wait to see the movie next. Are the characters on Hardy Books inspired by real people? Yeah, I mean, like there, there there's bits of um, there's bits of 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 a lot of people we would just kind of see around town and be like, oh, I'll throw a bit of this in, or you kind of you know you'd hear lads talking about pills they were getting, and they'd be like pills chat going, oh yeah, any good with it? He's like, oh fuck, pills are class, man. Clean buzz, man. So that's why we're just throwing in clean buzz, man. Maloney, man. How are you rowing? Uh, how do you, how are you doing? Just back from the pub doing a band rehearsal. So good to come back half cut and jump into your stream. Love watching your stuff, man. Blessing to you. Cheers, Rowan. I appreciate that, mate. I, I thought I'd put this out nice and early just so everyone could kind of look forward to it. Uh, the ma- the nicknames were Mad Sim Card Viper and Salmon. Yeah, Dylan, there was a couple of other lads that, that, didn't make it, such as Chinchilla Loftus, uh, Creamy Dave, we, we, uh, Sifu Dunleavy, which was Chris play. If you look through it, you'll see Chris playing a whole load of different characters, uh, like the Gimp. Um, who else? Like You'll just see him like, in the background of the tug of war in, in the first series. He's just in the back like this. And the idea of that was to kind of take the piss out of, uh, you know, in the back of Street Fighter, you just see the the characters were watching the fights doing this. So that was what that was all about. Oh, you cyborg. Mellet Emporium, finest pub in Ireland. It's a great, it's a great pub. Many, many is a many of generation of Maloney was drinking in that place. So that the car dealer in the Mitzi Turbo Cup. That's right. Yeah. Find find the lady. Two, three, five. Sorry, it's a king. Uh, that'd be 20 euro. I've only got a euro. Fucking hell, you got one. Funniest bit in Hardy Books was it's not even a goldfish. It's a bag, it's carrot in a bag of water. That was my older sister Lisa, who was in, she was in the the rap scene in the webisodes as well before it's the storyland where it was like, uh, oh the fam's to shma said me father for the donkey and you my dear son why don't you draw a lot said me mother we did but the old donkey won Paddy Joe by John Maloney is that Johnny Maloney from Schwinford is it? Uh, how are you doing, Martin? Had the crack meeting you after the London gig. How do you find the shows in England? That's brilliant crack. Uh, I remember me and Owen did two gigs in uh, Kilburn in Powers. It's not there anymore. But uh, we we were amazed to see, like, you got all these lads go, oh, mate, love the Hardy Box. It's fucking great. And, and all of them look like lads you'd see in Mayo. And it's like, where, where are you from? It's like, oh, my parents from Bell Mallet. And it was like, it's funny to see people who were like me, who were like biologically Irish, but with with it, who were born in England. It's a nice, it was a nice touch. I love doing gigs in England. Uh, like people come out to, to see you, you know, it's like if, if you do, sometimes you do gigs in Ireland, like uh, we see them cuts anytime we like. But when you do them abroad, people are really, they really like to come out and see you. Like this year, I wanted to do a, like a, a tour of, of the States, just, you know, playing it, playing a, a few hours of cover songs and just chat and shite in between the songs. And that, that, you know, I was really looking forward to doing a bit of that. So it's like, I realise for me, like I'm, I'm kind of like a the, the full package, really, in in terms of I play music, as well as, as well as doing a bit of kind of stand up and talking shite, you know. Oh, you, Gemma Louise, you're well. The guy in the that the guy you and Owen stole the coal from and was in court next scene worked on Vikings. He told me shooting Hardy Books was the best crack he ever had. That's right, yeah, Darren. Darren Conway, by he's a sound old skin for a Is it Darren Conway? Darren, anyway. Can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, was Chris the lad trying to seduce the horse with his Pete Tong mix at Salmon Stag? 
Maybe I'm not sure. He pops up a, a good a good few di- different times. Uh, well, how are you getting on? Says Jack McGahan. Uh, can you say hello to Mr. Clark, my teacher? He's your identical twin, Mr. Clark. Oh, you Clarky cat? Any crack? No. What we got up here? Uh, something to do with the old. What's the name of the song the Vipers always playing and even played in the skyline? I heard a techno remix of Radio Creep. Is it the if if it was that one, it's uh it's uh the jump by Chemical Brothers. Shout out Evan Butts, big fan, haha, <laughs> a man Evan Butts. The big jump, that's the one. Is Salmon the same in real life as in Hardy Books? Kind of lifeless. Uh, Salmon is the only person in the show that has his own name. So it's like, so fair play to Salmon's a good old skin, man. He's a good lad. I was supposed to do a podcast. I haven't done a podcast for three weeks. I just haven't got fucking had the time. Uh, and I, uh, to be to be honest, I enjoy I enjoy doing these live streams more than the podcast because this is like this is it's nice to just to kind of talk to you guys in real time. Fantastic situation. It's a fantastic evening, to be fair. Ginger stroke salmon. Fucking hell, Mikey. You didn't have to retract that one, man. Uh, is Jelly Baby Chris's dad? Jelly Baby is Chris's dad, yeah. I know one of the lads that were in the broadband episode, small fella at the start. Was he one of the lads from uh, from Kalala, was he? Let's see what else we got here. The random scream at the end. Damn, it's creepy. Thomas Creepy was a lad who I didn't know, right? I'd never met the guy before when I was about 15. Just decided to start punching the head off me with a bunch of other lads in Culture Mar. And I was like, I'll get him back one day. Haunt. If you ever do that again, uh, Sam and Mo- yeah, um, Michael Brown, who plays Seamus Mortimer, is, is one of the... Like, that's a man who should be... He should be in like the clinic with RTE because he, he's got the he's got the look of a man who could play solicitors and doctors. I'm sorry to have to tell you, we found a lump. <laughs> the funniest scene was you and the Viper in the chipper. Fucking genius acting from both. I want to be fucking sound to you, man. I want to be in sound to you. You've got a lot of that kind of crack around small towns where there are people like making out they're being sound, but they're actually overtly not being sound. And I must say there's, there's, a, there's a good gang in the house today. We're, we were up to 100 there earlier on, which is it's good crack. Uh, how great is that that your man... Uh, is that your man COVID caught up with Trump? i just seen that earlier on. But uh, that, that's an interesting touch, all right? I must, I must look into that a bit more. Uh, fantastic situation and maze, ama- amazing art and accidentally got insanely rich from investing in Bitcoin. Or who, who was that? That's interesting. David Cho. Good actor. Salad talk. Magic Mushroom Season. Best time to watch the Hardy books. Carl Straightburger. All I'll say is South Facing Hills, morning or evening. And you'll do all right. Seamus Mortimer, a safe past teacher in real life. He is. That's actually how, that's what inspired the safe pass scene was after I seen him doing the safe pass when I was about 24 and I needed to, I needed the safe pass scene so I could get the safe pass to work on the sites in Galway. And uh, I remember watching him going, man, this dude's a natural. And funny enough, like we were doing the, about half a week before we were doing the interview scene for YouTube, we were like, oh, who can we get to play one of the interviews? And then I looked in the Western people and Michael Brown, who plays Seamus Mortimer, was standing on a raft with another fella. And they were doing this thing called the Huckleberry Finn Challenge, where basically you have like a flotilla of lads on canoes uh, doing a charity event for water safety. And I seen him and the Western people, and I was like, Michael Brown, man, he'd be perfect. So I rang him up and I said, Michael, I don't know if you're aware of, we've been started doing this series with RTE, but uh, I, I noticed that you can you can act and we'd like to invite you to play Seamus Morton. He's like, Martin, do you know what? That'd be that'd be fantastic. I'd be there. And fair play, he was. And he's you know he's been a solid member of the crew since. Um, yeah, but I, I think we kind of ruffled a few feathers in the beginning with with the uh, 
with the industry because we we proved that you didn't have to have any acting background. And what we would do is we bring people in and we're like, you just play yourself in the situation, and they did. So me and Chris were the were the only ones other than Lexus who had to put on a different accent. And in the beginning, that was quite difficult because you'd be like, oh, how do you, how would you say that word without slipping? And then so it, there was an extra level of uh, difficulty for for myself, Chris, and Lexus. Uh, any plot threads you wish you'd gone further with? Oh, mate, there's loads. I, like what what I wanted it to be was kind of like The Simpsons, where you had a whole a whole microcosm of people, and then you could t- you could have almost like like a soap. And it had we have had uh, like an if we'd had an annual reoccurring series, we would have been able to do that. But like sometimes we've got like four years, and then I mean like it's been three years since we lasted the series, which. Is, is, a, is a bit depressing. How long is the stream go, going on? Oh, she's, 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 she's benching a good 35, man. A good 35. It would be, it would have been good seeing a Hardy Books episode with the Rubber Bandits featured. Uh, we did a lot of stuff with the Rubber Bandits back in the day and they, they were sound, man. Like, we, uh, we, we did a lot of stuff with them back in 2009, 2010 and they just kind of fucking bloomed after a horse outside and they went massive. Uh, I haven't seen I, I haven't seen either of them for years to be honest. What's the story with Shady Gandling? What about him? If he dies, he dies. It is what it is, Trump. What was that about? It sounds like something that Ivan Drago would have said about Apollo Creed. The young offenders. What uh Ke- Kevin says the young offenders is shy compared to Hardy Books, to be to be honest. Uh, I'll give you a bit of trivia about The Young Offenders. The director of Young Offenders is the guy who filmed Danny the Doonsman. I'm an Irish. Uh, and more trivia, speaking about Trump, you know, back in the day, everyone thought the sun sh- shone out of Trump's ass because he was doing The Apprentice. And, and uh, I remember we were sitting around my kitchen. I think it was at the time we were doing... When was it? It was after we did like the first series of Hardy Books and we were just kind of sitting around my kitchen in Mayo and we were watching this documentary about Donald Trump opening a golf course in Scotland. I remember seeing him going, there was like a whole load of Range Rovers just turning up and all the doors opening at the same time. It was all slick. And I remember he was saying, that he was doing a speech, he goes, I'm going to name this the Great Dunes of Scotland after my mother who came from these Great Dunes. And then I just loved the way he said, Dunes, and I started after we went to the Ifters in 2011. I was still on. I was still on the old golden hour the next day when we were driving back to Mayo, and I was shouting out the window. I was going the great dunes of, of the great shores of Mullingar to the open sprawling wastelands of Donegal, and I just kept shouting all these different getting things wrong, such as like you know, like the beaches of Mullingar. Or the windswept shores of Longford, and then, then I, I got in touch with uh, James Cotter and Peter Foot because they were asking us to be co- to go on Republic of Telly back in two thousand and ten, I think it was. So I rang them up and I said, "Look, I've got this this idea for a character." So I sent them me just doing a few few kind of characters in the back, and then that's kind of like where it went tits up with with Chris because Chris ended up leaving and going with them to Republic of Telly. And then he kind of he got the taste of he got the taste of the coin, and after that, then he was kind of independent for the rest of us. So that was kind of like the beginning of the the schism, should I say? Just listen to the Hardy Books podcast for Podge from Ham Sandwich. Really enjoyed your chat with Kev as well. Have you heard from him lately? I haven't heard from Kevin a long time, Sean. Noreen was a raid. Do I meditate? Uh, I, I what I would do is uh, if I'm putting the kids to bed, I put on this thing of a night called body scan meditation. And oh, Jamie J. Carr, Jamie, I must get you on the, uh, must get you on the mix here. Jump into the pod, uh, into the Discord group. Jamie J. knows the crack. I was going to get you on the podcast with Big Darren. Let me see what's going on here. Discord ain't working. Bear with me now. Bear with me. Uh, for any of you guys who haven't joined the Discord group yet, hop in, man. Hop in. It's it's great. It's a party. The party never stops. Well, kind of do it, but what are you going to do? Can't be at it all the time, you know what I mean? Jamie J, man, Jamie J. 
did a podcast with Jamie J there a while back. All right, Jamie. So I'm actually going to start the voice channels now. Uh, by the way, how is the how's the volume on this? Is it all right? Because I'm using this, but apparently I didn't. I haven't been plugging in the. I haven't been going into preferences and putting input as Yeti. So I've been plugging the thing in and it not working. Uh, we got Jer from Awfully Irish Podcast. I'll have to do a podcast with you this weekend if I can squeeze the time in. Tomorrow, so Keith, did you ever complete that fighting tour of Ireland? The big uh, fighting tour of Ireland. You know, it's uh, Castlebar, Enniscrown, and Knack. USA, Blaney, Irish. That was so. So yeah. So here's a bit of trivia. Back in the day when everyone was, did you see the Apprentice the other night? Did you see the Celebrity Apprentice where fucking your man from Poison was it Brett Daniels or something? He got fired, man. But uh, I was on. I was on the Celebrity Apprentice. I got fired first. Uh, that was shy crack. I thought, oh, this is gonna be a right DOS, man. They'll, they'll just ferry us around, and it'll be. Easy living. Can jump on, says Jamie J. Uh, I'm editing, but I definitely get on the podders. How are you, big man? I'm all right, mate. I'm pretty good. Uh, if you're if you're around tomorrow evening, we might we might slot in an old podcast with Jamie J. Carr. Get Big Daz and Pepper Meat in the mix. Uh, Patching Conway tonight. Where is Eddie Durkin these days? Uh, he's fucking knocking around the wilds, Mayohe. Good man. Uh, drop me a line then uh, on Facebook or something, Jamie. And- We'll, fucking, we'll go chatting or hit me up on Discord and uh, we'll take from there, horse. Take from there. Good lad. I see the old subscribe counts fucking rocketing up there, Jamie J, man. Content, man. Content. Shaheen Burn, 42. Also heard that you're a fan of 80s glam rock. Thoughts on LA Guns, probably the most underrated band of the genre. Do you know what? I haven't listened to much LA Guns, but they are basically the, the, the beginning of uh, Hollywood Rose and, and Guns N' Roses or LA Guns, Hollywood Rose, but I, I should listen to them more often. They're up, they're up there with the old Hanoi Rocks boys, who were also a big influence in that scene. Uh, Irish Muff Cabbage, uh, what is was it the UK, US, Irish, or Apprentice you tried for? It was the Irish one. So I was like, yeah, at the end of it, when it's being fired, I tried to quote uh, Raul M- or Gaza at the time when he met Raul Moat in the siege, and when she was like, you're a good man, but I just don't think you're taking this serious enough, therefore you're fired. And I went like this, send us a check in the post. They fucking cut it out. Uh, Irish taking over YouTube job. Oh, Dur- Durkin is up the town fighting other lads. we got JD. Good news. Just heard Gaza is on the way to the hospital with a few cans to cheer Donald up. You know, I've got him a few cans, a loaf of bread and a jacket and some fishing rods. If I can get into him, I know he'll be all right, man. Uh, if everyone can just give the old thumbs up there, that would be... A- That'd be great, man. That'd be great. Um, not because it's like me trying to be all popular and shit. It's just so like YouTube started bumping me up a bit. I'm st- I'm paying me dues, man. I'm paying me. Oh, fucking hell. That was, that was a nice little nudge. Fair play. Just a lovely little nudge. Thank you. It jumped from like 48 to 56. I like that. Timmy Mallet's after you. Whatever happened? To- fucking 60 thumbs. Keep keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, Timmy Mallet. Whatever happened to him? We're getting a lot of a lot of love for Noreen here. Maybe I should get her on the podcast. Actually, I should ask her because she was she was in it from from year dot. Do you know what I mean? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Fair place, you all for giving the thumbs up. Ah, there were the thumbs. Good lads. Good lads. I'd give you a thumbs up if you give me a tench bot on tick. That's not even a fucking nudge, man. It's a stone. Uh, Martin, do you ever reckon you'll go on adventures and take more vlogs? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the idea. But unfortunately, the, I mean, I was going to do that in the States as well. Great production value, man. Skyscrapers and stuff. I was going to do a live stream from the Grand Canyon. I'd be like, look at that for a fucking gorge, man. It's gorgeous. Any cans tonight, Liam? I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm doing, would you believe it? I'm doing the Sober October because uh, I'm, I'm, oh, Seanine, get a nice pint. And do you know what? I'll save that for fucking smashed up November. Good on you, Seanine. Good old Seanine. Graham Russell says, I have no idea how a gorilla got up the tone, but it ended up getting hit by a cab. Ambulance came for it. I love it, man. Fair play to you, Graham. It's just one of those little, just one of those little throwaway lines, mate. Do you know what I mean? Making the Grand Canyon look sexy. I filmed it with a 4K camera, even though now you've got 12K. Fuck your October, hey. No, I just, I, I really want to get into, I just want to get into a good kind of clear headspace now and start focusing on on putting out quality content. And I will spend the time trying to get 
this OBS thing because you look at if you look at the Viper stream and he he like he he's got the oh we got Jimmy Baz in the house Jimmy Baz Jimmy Baz is Jimmy Baz jumping here for the chat lad if you want and we got Shawnee we got a lot of a lot of fucking hard hitters in the house tonight hard hitters Jimmy Baz Jimmy Baz smoking bowls. Jimmy Bars, smoking bowls, talking bowls, Jimmy Bowls, smoking bowls. Got Kyle, I like there, Kyle, mate. Kyle can also jump into the dish court there. Kyle, mate, I had a, I, I was watching EastEnders last night, right? And I seen Barry Grant from Brookside. There was, there was a mechanic going, yeah, he's working, he's blue blood, he is. He's working for them. He's coming in here and getting bits of information. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing anything of the sort. And I was like, I recognise that fella from somewhere. Turns out it was fucking Barry Grant from Brookside, mate. Updating the Discord. Might be in Sharpish. Good lad, Jimmy Baz. Back home, mate. Did Hardy Books take a lot of inspiration from Trailer Pop Boys, or is that an urban legend? Graham Russell, thank you for the touch, mate. The Ashton touch, I appreciate that, mate. You know, you're a workhorse, mate. We got we got a couple of lovely lads now. Like you're all of the lads. EastEnders on Swedish TV it was on Live Leak. It was on a live Live Leak. So watching EastEnders on Live Leak, man. Billy Mitchell got decapitated. I asked Twitter what was going on with him. No one replied. Man, you threw it out into the ether there, Kyle, and no one got on it, mate. Nobody got on it. Gonna wreck the witness. Are you a fan of Brookside feature length jobs in the nineties? The last weekend in that. Oh, mate. Who's, who's on who's on the line now? Jimmy Baz, you're very welcome to the show. Jimmy Baz, more, 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 more. what's the crack mark, man? Then shout out to the Brookside boys. Hey, I'm all right, baby angel. What's the crack with yourself? Sound enough crack now. Um, I've been out playing the sports and drinking tonight because as of midnight tonight, my old town, I, for the boys who don't know, I'm in the northeast of England. I won't say the town, but... It's going into a local lockdown, Martin. So what they're saying is, I can't go and see my own my own daddy in his own house, but I can go and drink with someone I don't know in a bee garden. Man. What's the crack there, man? Ah, uh, mate. You know, you know what it, you know what the crack is. It's just confusion and lad, lad, lads just being so confused they don't know if they're coming or going. And when you're confused, the, the fucking carpet can be pulled under a man's arse. <laughs> Shin name or Shin Gajeric, like it's fucking Alex chat. Do you know what? Shawnee Byrne asked me, Do I miss the nights in Fibbers? Met us guys in smoking area years ago. The book fast was flowing. Fibbers is a great spot if you ever go down there. Lovely Brazilian um, women. I fucking miss Fibbers, man. This time, just the last month, then September last year, I went out for the old uh, the Gaelic final. It was Kelly, I guess, Dublin. Oh, yeah, Dublin looking for the five in a row. I went, it was now dry, as you know well yourself, Martin. I went out again then two weeks later for the replay. I was drinking with your man Clifford's sister in Fibbers. We were fucking drinking away. Dublin won. I threw me pint at her now. Greatest crack, do you know what I mean? We Fibbers sh- is the one for the crack, Martin. We you know, shifted. Well, son, I'd love to go up to a gig where you're playing it. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I, 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 I was actually, uh, was it two years ago? I was at, um, I was in Fibbers. And fuck me, I was very, very moldy and depressed after I was, you know, half time Mayo were a good bit up, and I was like, finally, I'm si- am I sitting? Am-, am I believing my eyes here? And it was uh, then they got fucking absolutely crushed in the second Crush. half. Would, would that have been Mayo to Rowan? Yeah, no, it was Mayo, Mayo, Mayo Dublin. Mayo Dublin, Mayo Dublin. Yeah, and, one, and yeah. do, do you know what? Yeah. Mayo- I was watching the one. I was watching the one match in Molly Malone's out in Amsterdam. Wasn't it only fucking tears, Martin? Wasn't it only tears? Like, lovely pints all night, like, but... Yeah. Fucking hell, man. As, as, the, as, the, as Tony the, Soprano the would say, real, like, the tears you know. of a clown. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, fucking uh, Ross O'Lalia you says... Clowns <laughs> There's a lot of lads dressed up as clowns just crying into their chips. We, fucking salt. <laughs> so, t- so tell me this: uh, the old, the lockdown. Are you, is it starting tomorrow? What's the crack? Yeah, sure. It's it's it supposed to start 
one minute past midnight. So what are we on now? It's 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 five to five to eleven now. So it's two nearly hours time to two. Go, right? I'm in what's called a local lockdown. Yeah. So I'm only allowed out the house then to go either meet people outdoors, but less than six people, or I can go out to work, or I can go out. There's another condition, but it's bollocks. But lads, like, well, the good thing is about you going to work, Jimmy. You see, you can earn money and then pay tax on that, and then that goes towards other wankers in the government who can spend your tax money any way they see fit. So it's important. You know what I mean? My favorite thing, Martin. As a man who's paying tax to the UK government, my favourite thing is being able to give money to a bunch of fucking paedophiles to go and spend money on a load of fucking BBC nonsense. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, man. I, I was looking into the old BBC. Uh, apparently, they, they raised uh, 100,000 signatures there, and it, and it reached 110,000. So it got debated in Parliament, and then it was like, no, nah, we'll keep it to 2027. Yeah. yeah, it got shut the fuck down, right? It doesn't matter. The whole, I don't know how many people's in the UK now, I would say several, maybe 20 odd million, right? I don't know. But if every single person said, look it, on a poll, look it, we're not paying the, the TV license anymore, boys. Sure, it's the fucking, the young one said it themselves, Martin. It's the BBC operate, the strictly impartial BBC operated on behalf of the Conservative Party, like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter how many of us say no, it's going to happen, isn't it? What would happen if they defunded the, the license? Would it would, imagine BBC having adverts? Yeah. It'd be like For sure. It, cu- it couldn't happen, Matt. It couldn't happen. Six hundred thousand and at the boom point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you, you pontificating bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie J. Carmate. Jamie, that was very, very generous. Thank you very much for that. You are a it's lovely man. Jamie J. Carr just, just gave me... He just, he just dropped me a 20 bomb, man. That's very, very generous. Fucking, oh. you get yourself an ace of hash. Oh, you get yourself a nice ace of hash for that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you now, Martin, actually, I have a fucking actual ace of hash now with me. And that's the sound of it. Ooh. It's from a, 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 local, a local coffee shop has opened. And it's very similar to an Amsterdam coffee shop. It's all very clandestine. You know what? I, I hear a few of these going around. A mate of mine, Jimmy, uh, I, I won't mention any names, but he managed to get his hands on very, very nice flavoured vapes. And uh, they, were, they were brought over from England, I believe. And I'll tell you one thing. They were the lovely little vapings. And you could just, you could, you could be anywhere smoking them. Do you know what I mean? See, I, I do know what you mean, but like for myself, Mark, I've never had a go of the vapes. I had one go in 2013 and I couldn't deal with it. But look at oh, but sure the, te- it, but look, the technology has changed. The will be walking about, I'll smoke the joints because you can't go to jail for it. All the West is going to do, they're going to take you half a joint off you. But you just run away, like it's crap. <laughs> do you know, uh, gay burn yourself, insufferable arseholes, you arseholes. A piece of shit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. <laughs> Do you know, that's one of my favorite ever uh, RTE uh, fucking random videos where your man uh, and he had he had the piss heads hunch, you know, is, and he, and he wore, you know, he, he's got that like that leather jacket that just goes above the belt line and he's and he's hunched over and uh, I think what's her name? Uh, Linda Martin was there and, and Brendan O'Connell. Yeah. And uh, and 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 Brendan Brendan O'Connell being a bit of a fun. I'm Brendan O'Connell. I'm a bit of a funny book, like you know. And I, 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 I I'm so. Gay bird, Thank you very much. But if you watch, uh, you can say. All, all you can say. Thank you very much. If you watch the video though, right? If you watch the video, just keep watching how uh, Brendan O'Connell just is. He's observing the scene from the chair, and it, it's just like he's, he's like this going. And it's like, uh, uh, I, I love the way he, 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 he comes on, right, your man, and he goes, how are you keeping, Pat? How are you? <laughs> oh, that's a good crack. Oh, we got yeah, Za- Za- Zacharias Quinn's in the mix. How are you, Zacky? Well, who's this now? Who's this, this, now? Is, this is young Zach, man. He's one of those teenage yeah, lads you hear that's, about. That's a crack. How's the man next now? A Quinn fella. How are you, Zach? Where are you from? Uh, What's your camera? Dublin. Good old Dublin. Dublin, fucking our clear, is it? Yeah. 
You, you'd be from fucking Black Rock with all the money. Right? <laughs> I'm staying far away from Black Rock. He's you'd be absolutely so sending it. Hey, hey, yeah. and lads, well, uh, there's videos on my fucking channel now, on the YouTube channel. Oh, when really? I was on the and I was at a penthouse flat and I took over on the, the final replay day in the Mayo jersey. All the Kerry boys and the Dublin boys, I went out on the balcony there. It's on, the, it's on my channel. Well, Had to be done. And, uh, all the Dublin and the Kerry boys, they couldn't deal with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, in, uh, There's only one, 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 part of, one part of Dublin, sorry, has my heart, and they call it Drumcondra. The fucking Red Parrot boys, there's some Guinness man. Right? The Red Parrot. Yep, yep. Here, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a Red link. On, 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 I believe it's Devon Street or Devon Road. Here, lads, uh, Devon, uh, give, no, sorry, give Jimmy Bars a subscribe there, because uh, Jimmy Bars is a magnificent human being, and uh, give him an old yeah. subscribe there. He's a the lovely. Here's Sasha, dude, do I need headphones? I give, I give you subscribe. I do videos myself, so happy not subscribe. Good man, good man, good man. Here, lads. The next time I'm out in Dublin now with the coronavirus, that I'm when I'm out in Dublin again. Here, lads. We have we have none other than Sasha Klein in the chat, the man who brought me to Sweden and turned me into the fucking header I am today. Uh, so, Sasha, if you click on the uh, the link there I've just sent, and uh, and hop in, we'll talk to we'll talk to fucking Sasha Klein, Uncle Sash Sash. A bit of fucking spedigate for the boys, is it? Uh, he, that lad, that lad's an Oxford, o Oxford geezer living down in, uh, living down in, uh, up in Edinburgh, should we say? Up in Edinburgh, we got, we got a uh, Christine Perez has joined us as well. Martin, can I be heard? He says, uh, you're, uh, he's not even in the mix, man. He's not even in the mix. We all have voices here. Everyone's heard. All opinions here are welcome. Uh, Occam's Brute says, look tell at, Jimmy... Look at, look at, uh, all, all opinions except bollocks chat. Like, let's be fair, let's, there's, a, there's a lot of old uh, bollocks chat going on at yeah. the moment. Oh, it's this, too much of it. Yeah, the, this, this, is, this is Martin's area for that every yeah. side of the but, story talk of each other. But, that's what it's about, you, lads. That's, that's what, what it's about, is right. Uh, yeah, I but, tell you, uh, Jimmy, Occam's Brute said, tell Jimmy to make content. Content, the random shit posts are good. Yeah, yeah, man. Myself and Ockham's, let me tell you about Ockham's Brute. That's a man now. I'll say a nickname for him. We call him Steve. He's about <laughs> Ackle. You know well Ackle, so you would, uh, Matt. You know, he knows Paddy Patton, Patton and the boys. Yeah. We, went, we went to Glasnevin uh, Cemetery. Myself and Ockham's Brute left fags on Michael Collins' grave then. I left one on Deb's grave. Uh, Stephen wasn't having a fair play home. That's a real man. And uh, Martin, yourself and yourself will have pints with the... Uh, with the, with Ockham's group then the next year when the Cronin's had to be done going. and also Jamie J Carr is saying are, are we ever going to get you back to Ireland sir and I'm like oh yeah I, I really miss it but the thing is I know I'm going to get myself into trouble if I go back especially living in Sweden mask free do you know what I mean it's uh, yeah. I'm going to go back yeah. there and I'm going to get I'm going to get a proper myth on and I'll be like this fucking mask I remember, but, but Martin it's what I'm saying kid like as of midnight tonight right which is now 58 minutes from now, right? 58 minutes from now, in the UK, the town I'm in, I'm not allowed to go and mix with no one unless it's outside, right? And that's a load of bollocks. So I'm going to do what I want when I want it the whole time, right? And look at if anyone's a problem with them, sh sure they can raise it with me. Do you know what I mean? There's no COVID marshals and nothing like that. Mm. And if there is, sure they're all, they're no, they're no better than the people who will be grassing up, you know. Your man who's selling weed on the street corner. Oh, look at your man's got a seven friend in a seven friend in. Look, oh, I'll call it fucking Gary, like him. Yeah. Oh, and it's chat, man. Snitches get stitches, man. Hey, man this, is it, this is it, like him. And they'll get more than stitches from me, like, you know, they, if you put two blades together anyway. <laughs> Jimmy, would they be getting bummed? Look at <laughs> I know you well. You know me well. We'll double team the cunts. There'll be no arse left on them. <laughs> I take them to they'll fucking be, Finland. Be into, they'll be bummed into the sixth dimension now. <laughs> folded inside a folding bummons. You know what? I take them down to fucking Dimension X to hang out with Shredder and Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady and the Foot Soldiers, man. We we'll go oh, taking a rake of pills. Yeah, they're, they're good crack in fairness. I'll, fucking, I'll, I'll rock the anuses of them until they're in the shit. They can't be shit. Do you know? I am, man. Not to, not to bring them in. What'd you say there, Zakin? 
Rafa's really going to give a euro to you there. I, I, I've seen the euro. Fair play. You know what, Zach? A euro to a 16-year-old is about three euro to a man of 37. I will go. Don't, <laughs> don't spend it all in one go, okay? Save it I, up. Bu- I buy a pack of skins out of it, hey? <laughs> now, nah, save that shit up, all right? You can get some good stuff for a euro. I can save indeed. can indeed. Hey, Zach, are you going to BIM, the, the, the Irish music school, when you, when you finish? Uh, no. I, when just I through that hour. <laughs> I kind of want to go to Wales, you know, because I heard there's good art programs there, so I want to do art, you know. So I'm not going to be out of Wales, you know. The biggest, is it? Is it the uh, the fish with the biggest dick in the ocean, as Ali G would say? I. <laughs> Wait, you want to be a fucking whale shark? No, be a fucking whale shark. And if you're in Wales as well, Zach, are you in Wales now? So yeah, comedy. Uh, <laughs> uh, J- Jimmy Bars and lads, have you ever seen this this video here? Right, um, it's just I'm gonna put a link in. So have this open in your later on. Uh, Owen told me about this a few years ago. I watched it last night. It's basically called Marcus, and it's a documentary about a lad called Marcus who basically did. Uh, I mean, this is to give you the backstory. He went to some. Did you ever hear of your man Tony Quinn? He's some sort of like the the, the Tony Roberts or was it Tony Roberts of uh, Ireland back in the the late nineties? He's one of these motivational lads, and during the the boom time of the Celtic Tiger, he was doing all these amazing uh, motivational jobs. Yeah, so this lad manages to convince Maura from Waterford to be his PA and minder. And this, this guy, Pat, 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 was, Pat was one of these Celtic Tiger merchants. And uh, Pat had invested uh, at the end of it. Like, I don't want to ruin it for you, because it, but I have to say, it's one of the fucking best documentaries I've ever seen. And it was, as, as Frankly White Lab would say, in the boom time. This was pure boom time fucking madness. Uh, your man, obviously, he's good at, produ- uh, he's good at music, reading music, uh, transcribing, arranging, and producing but let me just, without ruining it, doesn't have a fucking note in his head. And just watch that. It's called Marcus. It's uh, and, and credit to Owen Colgan for giving me the... I was actually telling him I watched it again there last night. Fucking brilliant. It was one of those, like, yeah, Network yeah, 2. Fair, 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 fair. <coughs> I'm not dying. Don't worry. Whoa. Oh, we got Chris... Um, oh. Chris, Chris. We, we got him. Why ain't they safe? Mary's Greece, why ain't they safe? What's going on, Greece? Why ain't they safe? What's it? I ought to, why ain't they safe? We got it's Greece, why? Are you Spanish, are you? It's not really, man. No, you're not. Greece, Perez. Drago la luna, porque yo siempre caigo, no? No. Hey, did, uh, I miss, uh, did I miss the crack about uh, Mr. President having the COVID? We discussed that. Uh, I know we haven't. Before we get on to that, can I just say the one thing, lads? Can I just say, isn't it fucking brilliant when you hear a lad from out in the USA say the word crack? Yeah. Isn't that great that that's uh, spread across the fucking Irish Sea the whole uh, way around? No, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm out proud. going, guys, Jimmy, Jimmy Jews' bars here with you. Just, just having the crack. Oh, the best cool. thing, man. Hey, lads, lads, you'll have to keep it. You're doing a lot of chatting over each other now. You have to keep it between the ditches, as Pat Kenny would say. Yeah, go, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I think I'm the only one. I stole that from the boys down there in Castletown. So, <laughs> Chris, you're an American. What's the crack with Trump? Is he on the way out? So listen. So you know what's crazy about it is. So obviously, y'all know he's got the COVID now. But the crazy part about it is, is he was on the campaign trail and he interacted with maybe a hundred people. So now all these people got to go get tested and Pence was right next to him too. So what they're trying to do is give Pence, uh, what's that stat? He's a, he's, he's got to work, you know? So even if he gets sick. He's a workhorse. Sorry, 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 Chris. I thought Mike Pence, I thought Mike Pence, like he was the guy on YouTube Zapping, if, if I may quote him, zapping faggots with electricity. Is that right? Not? He is a, he's quite a religious, he's quite a religious. He, 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 Schlegel he, man. He was saying, he was, he was saying, he was saying then, uh, take it in the crapper, you will get the zapper. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> as a matter of fact. 
Well, yeah. he won't even he's an old school book and fair fucks to stick him to the pipe. He won't even yeah. be alone in a room with a woman that's not his wife. He always has to have somebody else. There. Hey, do you know what? He's I not fucking wrong. Know. Callum Evans job. I mean, I get it as a politician, you know, you don't want anyone saying, oh, he raped me or whatever, but he's not, he did that before he was a politician. The man is off his fucking rocker. How's it going, guys? It's Mike Pence here. Take it in the crap, or you'll get the fucking zapper. If right? he ended up becoming the president, it would be worse than if Trump was the president. The man doesn't do anything hey, look. without asking Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump Dodge Trump merchants. He could be better, but boys, do we not all miss the George Bush Jr. days where everything was just fun? Yeah. 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 Everything was only right. Well, it's it's easy to see a tide turn. Well, you get you get you get people struggling with food and their families. It's easy to see a tide turn. Uh, I tell you know, it's interesting though. In all honesty, it's quite interesting to see what's gonna happen because it came from that hot chick there that uh, works with them. I forget her name off the top of my head. But she was the one that apparently had the COVID first, and she passed it along to, like, everybody. Let me see if I can look up the name. Right Super now. spreader. Name Helen Mirren. <laughs> she was filming Red you know, 3. I what, like, in, fairness, in fairness to fucking Indiana Mirren, like, she might be fucking 70-something, but bite. Hey, many a tune, many a good tunes played an old piano. Hold on, lads, one second. I'm going to get Sasha on the line. Yes, go on, Mark. How are you, Sasha? Yeah, how do I get to speak to you? Uh, have, to have, have you have you got have you got Discord, Sasha? Uh, I don't fucking know. Yeah, but I got headphones. Right, you you put the headphones in, and and go on to uh, the Discord group. Right, have you downloaded the app Discord? You don't need. You, you can actually just just go online and create a, a Discord account. You don't even. It's Sasha. You remember the same Sasha from the uh, Passion Session, is it? The Passion Session. Actually, Sasha was in Hardy Books in the um, at the really? end of the. I don't know, it was the, he was in the Foamy Night or the Zambezi Night episode. Zambezi Night. Yeah, he was. I need to say, I bring snowflakes here. Because I always get like, it's offended easily. Yeah, but Mario, what do I <laughs> do to be able to talk If to there you? is, they're getting fucking problems, uh, I can tell you. La lads, yeah, yeah. one second. Hold hold the line there for a sec. Hold the line. Sasha. Hold the line. As Chojo would say, hold the line. <laughs> right, Sasha. Don't be yeah. go on to Go on to discord.com. Start yourself a little accounting. And then jump in, and I'll put the, I'll send you the the link to the Discord group, right? I'll I'll send you the, the stuff on the Facebook, right? And I, I, I can't I can't find my headphones. So you I don't you don't need your headphones, phone. mate. You don't need your headphones. Yeah, you, you, you'll be all right. Put it on speakerphone. And, uh, 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 uh. Okay, Get cool. it I'll do that now. now. Right, see him. Him. right. Oh shit! That's the fucking one second. I'll send you the. Uh, hold on, hold on, lad. Hold on, no. I'm gonna get Sasha in the mix with the Discord. Massive. We need, we, 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 we we need, need a Sasha, Sasha and we need the boy. We need a Polish fella in the stream as well called Pasha. <laughs> Let's get a Pasha in as well. I know loads of Polish boys. But that's interesting. Uh, Sa Sasha was uh, half Polish. Are you Sasha? Oh, would you bad himself with the Polish lads with the Lithuanian lads as well? No, no, because Lithuanski, or this uh, Balski, is massively different languages, right? One's Baltic, and one is, uh, what do they call it? Slavic. Not Baltic. Slavic. Slavic. Yeah. Polish is Slavic, Lithuanian, Lithuanian is uh, Baltic, right? I speak, I speak 12 languages, I know them all. Well, I don't feel bad for the, for the fellas, though, because they, they've come over to Ireland, and they're called Polish like, immediately. So he goes going abroad and being called English. Polls are fantastic. Hey, fresh off the wire, gentlemen. Fresh, fresh off the wire. Donald Trump is now in Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, D.C. He's been admitted to the hospital. Lads, lads, yeah, but yes, please, sure. Too many people speaking. Yes, please, sure. Hold on, young Zach. Hold on, lad. Hold on. Because it's going to be shite for the viewers, man. The view, the view and count will fucking skydive. If there's too many people chatting, yeah, sorry. we're we're running a nice cool sorry, 52 at the moment. Hit the thumbs up if you're new to the zone. Lads, 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 lads. 
lads, let Martin take the microphone. Go on, Martin. Everyone stop. Martin, go. Right. So f first things first, we got some intel on the, uh, you know, he's gone to the hospital. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to take put the feet up for a few days and uh, let one of the boys take over the mantle. And, uh, Chris, you've got all the intel. What's going on? Yeah, so Donald yeah. Trump has now been admitted to Walter Reed Medical Center, which is the big military hospital in Washington, D.C. He got there about an hour and a half ago. So he's in the hospital now, boys. Is he on hash? Yeah. He says That's the only the word near, the, near, near, near to Andrew's Air Base, is it? Uh, yeah, I believe so. They're pretty close to each other. The word on the street is he yeah. just headed there out of caution. He's not. He does have some symptoms, but it's just out of caution that he went. So he hasn't relinquished well, any yeah. power yet. But the crazy thing is, is if both him and Pence are end up like out of permission or whatever, then Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. She'll be the one that uh, has to take over. Oh, Jesus. So, uh, 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 quite uh, interesting. What a chat. But hey, <laughs> hey, but I tell you now, hey, Chris, here. That woman wouldn't run a bath. Yeah. She couldn't run a bath. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Vince. We, we, we need to send a few old letters on to the White House now saying, look, at, we know that the Trump has the cold, but at the one time, we know he's still going to bait, what do you call him now, uh, the incumbent. Baden. He's going to bait him in the box match on Sunday called Baden, or whatever they call him. Well, is there another... He's going to bait. Is there another... Uh, um, Jimmy Baden is getting back. This guy. Is there another... <laughs> Pat Conway said he's going to the Oliver Reed Medical Centre. <laughs> well played. Well played, Pat. Right. Um, so is there another debate scheduled for Sunday, is there? The street now is like nothing is confirmed because this is yeah. all like kind of breaking. But Saturday, they, were, no. they were gonna do it maybe on Zoom, you know, like basically a, a nice live stream ah, through Zoom. That way, the good thing about that though is if Trump starts going off his rocker again, they could just mute the guy. But honestly, it doesn't look like anything's gonna be happening. That's not democracy. Do you know what I heard, lads? That's which do you know what I heard? I heard Trump kept deliberately interrupting because Biden was wearing a wire and he was getting fed information. Really? Yeah. Because also, you can actually see the wire under his lapel. Uh, some, yeah, and there's something under Trump's hair, right above his ear as well. There's a picture of it. If you'd like Was it a woodlouse? <laughs> a woodlouse? Like, they're two sides of the same coin, though. Like, they're both fucking imbeciles. Yeah, they're, they're both, both doing the same around. shit. It's... It's quite ah, gunship the laden. Who the are the people fucking Michael Lee Higgins? He's all right, you know. He does his job. I'm making me sound like. I mean, he he sits down. And right, he he's only an old communist, that lad. Fucking communist. I mean, he does his job, and he does his job all right. So you know. Well, look, he was never the same since he came back from the Grey Havens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He really, was... I got a joke for Irish people. Now, if anyone gets offended, I'm sorry. So a, pre a priest, a rapist, and a pedophile walks into a bar. He orders a drink. It's one guy. It was just one oh, guy. Yeah, Good right. luck. Jeez, tonight. Yeah. Your man was from County Carlo. County Carlo. Uh, yeah, nothing like the old, you know, so, priesting. And the last, bit, the last bit of intel is uh, there's been no transfer of power. Donald Trump's still in charge. And he'll be spending the next few days at the Walter Reed Medical Man. Center in Washington. Man. Man. Let's be honest, folks. Trump is the figurehead, like him, but he's not in charge now. The, the Federal Reserve is in charge. Yeah. Like. I mean, I'm very excited. I don't know about you, lads, but I'm very excited to see this new Borat movie that comes out when he comes. Yes, to I only got the link. That's going to be gas. It's going to be great. I, and I was a little concerned, too. I thought it, I thought it might have jumped the shark, but it looks like it's going to be fucking hilarious. Sure, I thought it was only a, a joke. Like, I thought one of the boys was saying to be like, look, at 2020 is so shit, and wouldn't it be great for new bar? But no, it's true. Like, and that the trailer looks fucking gas. Like, right. I tell you, it, 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 it could be better, though. It could be better. Did anybody if the country, the, uh, if it, 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 Brought fucking Martin in, like it would be better, you know. The bastards. Kevin Murphy in the chat said the only good commie is a dead one. Shout out Kevin Murphy. Can you see me? No. 
Did anybody catch the pandemic special from South Park the other night? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not watching it, right? Because I'm sick of the coronavirus. No crack in the coronavirus. I'm going to tell you. Days past. In 1999, right? Oh, Chris, let me, t- let me tell you. Let me tell you, man. I've been watching South Park since I've come out, right? In 1999. Yeah. I'm not going to watch it purely because it's the coronavirus. Uh, it's the lockdown. It's a... There's no crack in the coronavirus, man. I'm close I'm, to fucking I'm shooting a few people. I'm like, telling you. I can't I'm, like, I'm those watch. boys did a great job. The episode's pretty darn funny. It's, it's, it's good, is it? Yeah, it, it's worth the <laughs> watch. You know, it's right. Into it's, bed. Uh, it's, yeah, so, funny. Fucking kids are still up. Oh, you got the, the, mm-hmm. the last the line, like running around. I didn't mind. Yeah. Taking the piss all together. Get the, get, get the kids to speak a bit about the uh, Spence car. They must go leg it in now. They are talking to shent. Yeah, man, go, go in now. Snacker do, snacker do, kinder, Svenska. This guy is an intelligent man there. How many languages you speak there? Samantha Hager, good to have you on. I uh, want to say hello to uh, Pat James Ricketts as well. Hey, from Newfoundland, Canada. Hardy Bucks for life. Cheers, Patine. Appreciate that. We got Samantha Hager's in the mix as well. Any relation to Sammy Hager? Samantha Hager. Samantha Hager. There's a, there's a and you can eat. Kicking about the last two yards in the stream. The legend. And uh, Chris. Ben, come on, honest, please. Not, you can, you can watch something on the iPad. I know about 12 minutes. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Mr. Mark Clinton on the iPad. Uh, King Mark Here, come here for a sec. Come here. Ellis. Come here to me. Look at this cheeky laddie. Well, you should be in bed. Into bed, good boy. Go on into Bobo's. Dad mode. You know what? I told them. I need you to be in bed early tonight. It was the one thing they didn't do. <laughs> I should have. I should have said to them, "You can stay up all night if you want." They probably would have been asleep by nine. Uh, the reverse what, time now, what time is now? What time is now? Twenty past fucking twelve. Midnight, but saying that, I suppose it was pretty noisy with all the all the noise going on in, in this like. Twelve thirty at night in Sweden. Hey, Martin, uh, what kind of computer are you looking to get your hands on? By the way, uh, one of those uh, D-Wave quantum computers. Andy, is it? Huh? Martin, uh, because I found one for uh, I found a nice little used iMac at the pawn shop. Oh yeah. So we'll talk one on one. What kind of what kind of denarius we benching? It's only like four hundred bucks. That's what I'm saying. So we'll chat. We'll figure out something there. What What are the specs? What year? I don't know all that. I don't know all that. It was just it was a 2018, and you know if it's restored, we'll figure it out. But I mean. I'm sure it's relatively close to like uh, what I'm working with the eight gigabyte, two twenty one thirty three megahertz, you know, one point four gigahertz quad core Intel four i five. So I mean, I'll get all the information for you, and we'll figure out something. So, uh, well, we don't but, 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 Chris, Chris, it's not the most interesting content to be chatting about. We're down to forty four viewers now. We've lost a fucking load of lads. We lost. <laughs> we'll uh, talk about that in. We we'll talk about that later. But uh, an, a, an American hey. job would be handy, all right. Uh, let me say, uh, Pat, uh, Pat James Ricketts says, what is your budget? Can price parts to build a rig, man? Uh, hit me up on the Discord group. Look, I, I, I don't know if I should... Uh, since someone fucking Steve Jobs died, the, uh, the quality of uh, uh, Max are fucking shite now. You can't even put extra RAM into these lads. Like. And this, this, one I, this one I have now, I really... Uh, I was gonna go like I was gonna take advantage of the the, the shite with Brexit that time, and so somehow the the currency of the, of the pound dropped when I was buying this. And I was gonna get like a seventeen inch one, and I was like, yes, I'm gonna get it for five hundred pound cheaper. And next thing, the fucking Apple go and jack the prices up, bastards. But uh, they've not been the same since Jobs checked out. I tell you that. Well, uh, a bit of a bit of uh, bit of discussion on another thing then. Uh, and this is going mainly to you, Chris, then, as, a, as an American fella. Do you, uh, do you get much of the Gaelic out there and for the sport? Like, and, uh, I believe every, every, at least every Irish 
man and woman in the chat now would want to see the GAA coming on properly now. We'll talk about a win for all islands not happening now. There's a, a bit of provincial shite going on, like, but there's going to be no all island. Chris, would you be a, a fan of the GAA, like your man, uh, or what did they call him? The, the, the fellow who loves it out in America. Anyway, he loves it. Would you be a fan of the GAA, Chris, or would you not yeah. know much about it? When I was in Dublin, I saw uh, good old Aha Clea. I think they were playing uh, Tipperary in. In football, oh, and I didn't catch a hurling match, man. but I wanted I want to see a hurling match so bad. It looks unbelievable. As Martin yeah. said, though, the the boys from Mayo they aren't much for hurling. Is that is that true? Not yeah, hurling there's hurling. not there's not much good hurling in the Mayo, but there is pockets as good parishes. But yeah, there's not, um there's oh, up near Ballyhonus you have uh, Taurine. They have they they, they have a uh, Gaelic team, but. There is a there is a, a Discord there, Samantha Hager. I love it there, Anofia. There you go, hop in. And you, if you want to come in for a chat, Samantha, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. And I believe, and I believe uh, on the on the and that there's Samantha Hager. I'm in now for a chat, kid. But uh, Chris, I believe uh, in Parish. Fair enough, Bally Harness. Not bad, Helen. Like, do you know what I mean? Right. Not bad, Helen, but. Right. There's a few parishes and and about Mayo with good hurling, but the I county mean, itself, yeah, you're right. It's a football county. Mayo is the big ball. It is a small. Martin said it himself. Uh, uh, Tipperary, you're good with the small ball. Uh, Mayo are good with the big ball. <laughs> Ireland's quite similar to lacrosse, which a lot of people don't realize is the actual national sport of Canada. It's not hockey. It's lacrosse. That's only one of the American jobs. One, 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 one of the uh, there's, a, there's a lad who plays for the national uh, Irish lacrosse team now. He's called Dara O'Keefe. He's a man from Waterford. He's a good friend of mine now. And uh, he, since last year, we met out at Tommy Tien, and to be fair, in, in Newcastle at one time. I met uh, Ockham Brute, to be honest, one night. He's out and Dara O'Keefe went out. He's from Waterford then. And uh, he, he plays now for the, the national Irish lacrosse team. I doesn't follow the cross like, but uh, I, I hear it's big in Canada running with it. Yeah, it's literally the national sport, and it's huge on the east coast of uh, of America, and it's growing. Uh, like I live out in Los Angeles now, and it's I'm from Massachusetts, but I live out here in LA now, and it's coming out here too. It's supposedly a growing sport, and I had. Is that uh, there? That, that, there's plenty of Irish out in Massachusetts, so. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Everybody in Boston's either Irish or Irish. Uh, you know. like, you've got the fucking best, you know? Right. Uh, the fucking ship yeah, to the dropkick Murphy since 1990. I love the fucking Boston, boy. I lost me fucking peg leg, you know? I was kind of <laughs> upset then, and some fucking yeah. cunt was throwing stones at me, and my peg leg fell into the sea like, and I wrote a song about it. And it was a great song. But I, I, I'm no good at singing, so I sold it to the Dropkick Murphys, and I didn't get a penny for it, anyway. But I sold it to uh, Flog and Molly, they didn't give me a full pound for it. Fucking bad. I was shit-faced, like, they gave me a kiss, they didn't give me any fucking money, like. Oh, up, the, up the GA, lads. It's, it's, it's lovely to hear that the, uh, out in Canada, anyway, and in, in North America, they'll be looking at GA as well, and, uh, it's, it's, it's a fair shame there was no All Ireland this year, boys. I was out uh, actually, actually out last year for the the Leinster final in the hurling, which was Wexford and uh, Kilkenny. I was shouting Wexford myself. And uh, the the hurling. Like, they won like that's the hurling, like that's the Leinster final in the uh, in the senior hurling. But then uh, obviously Tip went on to win it. Tip would be my uh, my county for the hurling, like so. Fair foul, but there was none this year, lads, and it's a fair shame. Fucking temporary here, hey man. Class materials. Fucking oh, funny, give it a man. Fucking Jimmy Kiss. The, 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 the Ryan clan, I will shout out the Ryan clan from Clan Mel. Some fucking boys for the weightlifting, some boys for the helm. Great crack. Here, Cal yeah, Callum yeah. Evans, hop in. We got Cal Callum Evans says, Mr. Maloney, wrong way to go with this crowd. You need more Irish lads. I can hear one clearly, but by Jesus. Well, Callum, jump into the Discord group and have your say, man. Yeah. Have you have your say? I'm sorry, I'm a disappointment there, buddy. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, fucking Chris, I don't know what you were going on about the, the lacrosse. You seem very knowledgeable in it. 
Wasn't it a, a Native American sport originally? Yeah, actually, the Irish team just gave up their spot in the Lacrosse World Cup for the Seneca Indian tribe so that they could do it. Also, partly because of the uh, the COVID situation, they didn't want to travel over here. But shout out to the National Irish Lacrosse team because that was quite nice of them to do that for the Seneca yeah. tribe in upstate New York. I was, yeah, the show was my, man, my man fucking... As I say, Daryl Keith. Daryl Breen. Shout out to him. He's on that team. I mean, it's it's quite it's a little bit similar to to hurling, except you know, there's a there's a basket or a net on the end of the stick. You know, it's and it seems like you can hit each other a little bit a little bit more. But hurling looks rather violent to me. Hurling is not very violent. It's bashed. It's not violent. Bash, and if you're too slow, you'll get a hurdle on the back of the head. A bosher on the back of the head is because you're too slow. Hurdle is not violent, man. I, Bash, I, when I was in Galway last year, I saw a, a guy playing with his girlfriend, and she wasn't having too much hurdle in the garden. So I just asked if I could get involved, and the guy was like, is it, have you, How long have you been playing? And I was like, This is the first time I picked up a stick in my life. He's like, Jesus. I was told him it's so similar to lacrosse in that sense, but. I don't want to get too much talking. I don't want Martin's viewers going down because this stupid American over here is talking about lacrosse. Oh, no. It's an interesting topic, like. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Go Martin. Sorry. No, no. I was just saying, sure. Like, I, I didn't know lacrosse. It was originally a, a Native American game, was it? Yeah, they used to, uh, the tribes in the Northeast, they used to, and in Canada. Like up in the, you know, the northeast and I guess the southeast of Canada, they used to battle instead of like, you know, going out, they would actually kill each other during the game. There'd be no like field and they. There'd be no ref like. With that. There'd be no ref. No ref. No ref. This, this, this would be tried like, uh, like the Norway house tribe. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that one. Kevin Murphy Norway. said, isn't the cross what posh American lads play? It's uh, like they would literally they would they would decapitate each other as well with the sticks. Yeah, yeah, that's Norway house, Norway house. And uh, it was it was a it was a violent game though. Even now these days, there was a kid fifteen years ago. He got hit in the chest with the shot that was probably going eighty eight miles an hour, and it hit him square in the chest, and his heart stopped, and he died on the field. Jesus. Yeah, fucked. Oh yes, Samantha Hagar. How you doing, boys? How was the form, hey? No. As uh, Pet James Ricketts here. Ah, fuck him. James. James Jean. Any crack? Good boy. Just got off of work having a draw, huh? Oh, whereabouts are you? In Newfoundland. Ah, Canada. fucking. Yeah. Ah, Canadians are in boys. Hook Canada. Do you, know, do you know a guy called Evan Murray over there? Do you have a promoter? No, boy, I don't. Is he on the island or uh, uh, no, in Canada? No, no idea, mate. No idea. I wouldn't mind going up there. Uh, how, how the uh, the trailer box boys lads? They're from Halifax, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Halifax, Nova Scotia. Ricky, Bubbles, and Julie. And what about Steve? Nova Scotia, fucking Halifax. And we got we got Samantha Hager. How are you, Samantha? Samantha. Hey, cr crank up the gain, man. Crank up the gain so we can hear your voice. Are you from Canada yourself, Samantha? Are you? are you from the Americas? Yeah, I'm from Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Michigan. Are you a youper, Samantha? I'm not a youper, no. Youpers don't uh, like trolls. They call us trolls if we live in the Lower Peninsula. Under the bridge. <laughs> oh, what's the other one called? The, the opposite of youpers. Around uh, the looks that way. Trolls. Why is that? What's that? Well, why did they call you trolls? Uh, well, have you ever heard of the Mackinac Bridge? It connects the Lower Peninsula and the Upper Peninsula, so we live below the bridge. It's a stupid joke. So, oh, I see. So, where's the bridge? Is is it um, Michigan State? Is it near Lake uh, Michigan? Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sure, Shawnee knows the track. Uh, I was going to say, has anyone seen um, Beetlejuice, a.k.a. Um, Laurie Lightfoot, the, the mayor of, of Chicago lately? It's uh, she, she was dressed up as some sort of super, 
some sort of superhero who's going fighting against um, COVID, but it's one of the most r- ridiculous things I've ever seen. I was like, Halloween game early. I don't know where to be on there, but my time to lockdown for the coronavirus, like, oh. Chicago's going to hell in a handbasket. The violence on the south side, too. <laughs> that was the south side in general. Chirac, man. Chirac, we strapping fucking bullets around here, man. <laughs> Chicago's my track, man. They used to be great. Yeah, they've been having some serious uh, riots and violence, even in the downtown area. The yeah. is, people are just flocking yeah. out of the city. They yeah. are. Let's, Remember, let's move yeah. away. Again, boys, we're moving towards the old politics crack, though. Let's move no. Yeah, fair so point. Right. So what's going on now? Is there hurling or football season going on now with the GA? There is, there is, there is but only provincial like this. Oh, yeah. Provincial oh, champions. Oh, Talk about the Winter All Island, like there will be no Winter All Island. Like, you are, it was supposed to finish lockdown. No, it's a pass. Whose phone's ringing there? That's weird. Sorry, I'm ringing, I'm ringing Yosef to see if he's around for the chat. Oh, right. Give, uh, would you ever uh, get stateside? Oh, okay. Well, you see, the problem is with stateside, uh, he's an unknown quantity. Uh, stateside is, is uh, basically anytime I do a video with stateside, it ends up. Uh, me having to put the video into private mode because he says some pretty controversial <laughs> shit. He actually. I love to get a hold of him. No shame, or I can only imagine. I tell you one thing. He uh, he crossed the line. Well, he's been doing that a lot with the shit he writes me lately. But he actually uh, he sent a picture of his Filipino woman, and then said, "Don't ring her, Martin. I trust you." And I was like, right. right? And then it's just, anyone goes near her, they'll get this. And he just sent me a picture of his hard on. And I was like, uh, Tom, it was, it, was, it was a bit much, mate. Yeah. He was benching a good five. I'd imagine he's very understated. <laughs> like, I have a fucking friend. And, uh, he's, he's fucking dangerous. He's like on Facebook. And uh, I remember sitting with him one day and Shades I sent a picture of some random fucking lad's nudes just out of the blue. He's a fucking what? Uh, a, a enigma wrapped in a breakfast roll, as he put it, Martin. He fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's a he's a fucking. I, I think I think he's he's got he's got problems, man. He's got problems. Uh, and I, I think uh, he's a pro with that. But <laughs> don't be all. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, lads, hold on one second. That's while uh, while Martin's getting the next buy in. Let me actually. Let me, uh, would you be smoking the old fucking hash now, would you, lads? Would you, Samantha, Chris? Tonight I am, yeah. Go oh, on, Samantha, what hash you got, girl? Um, well, it's not hash. I vape it, actually. I have a vape pen for it. I have uh, two, two different strains of homegrown weed here now, and... Ooh, one grown. I was growing a uh, double push cake, which is all right. Mandarin nice. punch auto, just beautiful. I uh, did uh, just finish some alcapoco growing, then uh, two, I think. Uh, What's the rules over there in Ireland about growing? Are you right? Is it legal or no? Uh, no, no, not at all. But, uh, I Right? <laughs> I have the two strings of weed growing. I have one type of hash oh. made myself, and I have another one bought from a local coffee shop in brackets. And uh, I'm going smoking a joint now. I'm rolling it up with the, uh, <laughs> the homegrown Kush and a bit of the Amsterdam in pot. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I, I just feel the. It's kind of. I'm 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 single one. For me, it's it's so odd. My God. You can't just go down to the store, you know, and buy whatever the hell you want. Like I can't. Yeah, 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 I can, I can, because I know the door code, like, in the back. Like, we've got clandestine chai, I, I may hey. make a video of clandestine, just down on the floor, and put it on the Jimmy Bar's YouTube channel, <laughs> then, just show this, there's fucking coffee shops around, but people wouldn't know. Ah, oh, I got you. They should be teaching, I'm going to be seeing myself. How's the county Kowloon, oh. now we've the best, hash. A perch living in fucking Holland. There's fucking hash everywhere. Holland, no, 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 no. 
big dippers? You, you, get, you get any in the summertime? Uh, it's, it's the back end of the summer now. We've got a fair bit of hashing, but the, the hashing yeah, is the crack. The, the you guys have any, so you have any shatter over there so you could do some dabs or what? He's Man, coming up in the hash I game. Need I need shatter. See, we get the same climate pretty much here in Newfoundland as you guys get. Um, but we can't go. We can't go uh, I mean, you get a couple months, you might get a few in. I, I planted about six around, but people tore them up, I think, pissed oh, off. Horrible. <laughs> you don't ever go to Sunnyvale, do you, Noof? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise that, that shit. I lived it here in the uh, well, 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 well. Hey, tell me this. Uh, what's uh, has anyone ever been to a trailer park? Because a mate of mine, Dave. Uh, yes. Because a mate of mine, Dave, was telling me last week he went to a trailer park in the states, and he just said like everyone is addicted to some sort of pharmaceutical. Um, fucking, yeah, that's accurate. Yeah. Sure. Uh, this part of the park. You don't have to go to the trailer park. Everyone's addicted to pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. The fucking Sackler family. Yep. Smack sack. Yeah, you know you know what? drink is 13 weeks. Hey, congratulations, man. You've been off the drink 13 weeks, have you? Yeah. Oh, I feel pretty good, man. Yeah. Was it hard at first? Did it, did it affect your dreams or anything there? Nah, fuck, man. I, I don't know. I just, one, I never even had a bad hangover, really. I just didn't feel myself, and I said, fuck it. And, uh, yeah, never, never touched you it. You never had a bad hangover, and, and you're over the age of fucking 30. <laughs> You've never had a face. Well, 31 now. Jesus, I used to drink. Yeah, like, say, yeah, yeah, I so much. Much. <laughs> I'm getting fucking mad hangovers, like, but when they when they don't go away after a day, you start you know start to realize you. Age. Well, you, look, uh, as Mister Make would say, Sackler opiates. Don't you think? Isn't it a bit of a strange coincidence that the e epidemic of of opiates kicked off massively oh, after uh, Afghanistan? It's no, not. It's, it's it not before that. It was before that. Oh, before that. <laughs> The boys went then and took over the Afghan opium fields <laughs> like that. It's directly. Look who is about it. It'd make you fucking wonder. Seattle wonder. job. Seattle job. I'm going to tell you about it. The CIA then went over. It stands for the Chartered Institute. The Supermax. Hold on, lads. Try, try not to talk over each other there. It would it'd be it'd be great, right? If I can if I could figure out how to get us having like uh, if I could if I could somehow manage to see I don't think I don't think this I mean I've tried it but it's too laggy if I'm may like if I try and watch a video and do a live stream and, and capture the screen of OBS, it's not powerful enough to kind of get and it's all it's also fucking really small. But there must be a way of me incorporating the uh, the Discord group, if we all had like a window or, or, or even a Zoom call. But, so, uh, was it... No, we, 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 Martin, we could probably WhatsApp it and then you just stream maybe, I don't know if you could record the phone then or what. The code. Unless, may, maybe I could do a Zoom call. I don't know, I'll see what the crack is. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop this one now because uh, I really need to get those kids to bed because they're taking the absolute piss now. But what I'll do is, yeah. if, if I can get them off to Bobo Town, uh, I'll come on again. There is no kids. <laughs> we'll, we'll, try, we'll try a voodoo call then. A voodoo call, exactly. But, um... But, 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 but if you if you keep um, if you so if anyone just like or get on the Discord group to keep the chat going in the meantime, and um, and then I'll I'll come back on with a with an addendum job to this live stream, within reason job within reason. Um, Martin, you need to put some putching in the food. <laughs>
right, look, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll be back. Pure house party, Joe. Yeah. China, biggest purchase of Afghani Brown. Uh, there's some some interesting characters here in the old uh, in the chat group. Fair enough. So Joseph, oh, Ma Mikey and Reinhardt, thanks very much, Mike. Mike, you're very generous. Like every every time I do a stream, the man is representing, and I do appreciate it, mate. It fucking it does it does help the uh, it does help the the economy, all right, especially in these fucking shitty times. So Mikey Reinhardt, uh, Mike, and if you're if you're in later on for a chat, jump into the jump in here to ye old Discord and hang out with ye old crew, Master Splinter and the boys. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get back on as soon as possible. I need to lay down parental justice. Uh, I'm not I'm not insinuating that, but uh, no, I just need to give them some stern words, man. Stern words such as "What are you doing? Why are you doing this to me?" Do you know what I mean? That's that's about the the height of the, the sternness. I'm a bit like Flanders' dad in The Simpsons, like, "Man, yeah, man, what are you doing? Why are you gonna harsh my buzz, man?" <laughs> like uh, nothing that has worked. Donald oh, McDonough says, do you reckon back. Trump will croak Malone Town? Uh, I doubt it. Uh, I doubt it. You know, I, I, I think th they'll have the best fucking stuff pumped into his veins. They'll, they'll, they'll yeah, probably... Gobble. Yeah, they're, they're just going to put gobble ghoul via intravenously into him. <laughs> He's like, technically, <laughs> they say I'm obese, but we got fantastic workers, doctors around. I mean, these are the best in the business. So he'll be all right, man. He'll be all right. Stick him on a fucking treadmill for about half an hour. He'll be grand. They might, they might have to get him back on the drink. But, uh... I, 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 let me tell you, the coronavirus is a good friend of mine and the Chinese are going to... I tell you one thing. This is the most fucked up election uh, I think any of us have ever seen. Uh, it was mental with Hillary last time, but... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, really, uh, nothing would fucking surprise me at this stage. Uh, it's just so mental that... Uh, Vote for me for fast press. <laughs> Pedro for president. <laughs> I'm going for class press. Pedro can't be president. He's Mexican. They have to build the wall, sure. <laughs> and pay your votes on me. I have the exact same pint glass. Oh, you <laughs> I'm do? I'm drinking water out of right now. <laughs> Had to be done. Those, all, those little glasses aren't worth a fucking wank, man. You know what I mean? But uh, tell me this, Samantha. Where did you hear about the Hardy books? Was it from Netflix, was it? Yeah, I saw it on Netflix. And I think I said Gabba something Google. about Trailer Park Boy. Oh, no. It didn't, but I watched it. And I was like, I stopped after like 10 minutes. And I had to tell my boyfriend. I was like, dude, you're going to love this. So I, I've watched it so many times. Have you been spreading the word over there? Have you? What's that? Have you been spreading the word? Yes, I tell everyone I know, but people are like, oh, it, it's an Irish TV show? I don't know. And it's like, dude, whatever. <laughs> As Sean would say, Samantha got hit by the Netflix algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know... <laughs> sounds like there's too many black and tans there. But you know, the, the weird thing is, right, imagine if one of the Kardashians had just gone... Oh my god, I saw this show. It's so crazy. It's called the Hardy Box. And then it's uh and then it's like we're the biggest thing since Kanye's Yeezys. That's what we need to get happen. Oh, breaking news, Trump in critical condition after experiencing that COVID-19 symptoms. Critical condition. Fuck me, man. Where did you see that? Where is that? Mr. Baker, I don't know. Trump in critical condition. Uh you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some fucker just basically uh, threw, uh, left the vial of the shit out and, and uh, uh, let me see, we'll go. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's. And he gave thumbs up to the press as he was transferred to the hospital. He's not in critical condition. No, Mr. Mr. Maker, you were fucking trolling us, man. It was fake news, yeah. man. It was fake news. Are we on about fun? Are we on about Trump? Yeah. Top Trumps. Marvel comic job. John O'Sullivan, hold on. I'll check. I'll check the fucking Oracle of Twitter and see what came up about Trizum. Because Twitter knows everything, man. It's the Oracle. It's the it's the Ocarina of Time. I heard Trump's pregnant. No, CBS News is the one. You can see the video of him giving thumbs up. He just has a little fever. That's all. Oh, we got Sasha back in the mix. One second, let's see what he's... 
how he's doing. Sasha, how you doing, mate? Did you get that? Fi- did you get that figure? Did you? Like a cunny, scan your fucking fingerprint. And fucking takes him about ten hours to get through to the bathroom. Yeah, well, I, I, I just speak to you on YouTube. Fuck you, man. No, they don't. They don't have that feature anymore, unfortunately. It's it's. Uh, yeah, it was a lot easier when they had Google Hangouts, but they've they've gone and fucked the crack, mate. Yeah, I'm fucking insane. Uh, yeah, fingerprint. I don't have any fingerprints. Yeah, well, what? Why are they asking you to scan your fingerprint? I don't fucking know. Download the app, Martin. Probably just to download the app. Yeah, download the app. Says Chris Perez from Los Angeles, the City of I'm Angels. Uh, you've got an iPhone, and you need, you need to you scan your fingerprint to download the app onto your phone. That's all you need to do. Yeah, he, he, he has an Android. He has a Samsung uh, Galaxy job. Well, I don't know much about that. Then. Uh, hey, fuck you you hear you puke in the blue note tonight. <laughs> this is just me. Did, uh, did you puke in the, in the blue note, did you? Yeah. Had to be fucking done. Listen, Sasha. Voice, that link I sent you, mate. You just, just, that, just go on. To, you've got. I've already done it. I've already signed into Discord. It's been a bastard. Uh, maybe I, I've got Discord on the fucking. Right. What's your style? Let's find Discord. Right. I've got Discord somewhere. Yes. You start drinking early. I just want to get a I do, but I'll do that through the iPad. Sasha, Sasha, what? Sasha. He's, he's gone. He's going to do it through his iPad. He's going to do it through ye old iPad. Who said that? Martin, can Sasha hear me now? No, he's, he's gone again, but he might be watching it. Let, let me tell you, Sasha, you've no right to be sick by it. I have yeah. two hashes and yeah. two beans and three different beers here. I have a pizza on the way. Don't be sick. There's no pizza on the way here. <laughs> there's lots, there's That's lots and on. lots of crawling. Who the hell am I talking to? Loads of fucking mad cunts, okay? Listen. My name is... Are you speaking to Porrick Flynn now? Okay? Try it. I'm speaking to some sort of lecturer or teacher here. <laughs> That's the sound I'm getting. Flynn. Flynn. Of the late late, I was on the late late once. I never took, took money. money from anybody. <laughs> Do you understand? I never took money. Listen, late, late. And let me tell you, me. I have a house in Brussels, a house in Castle Bar, and a house in Dublin. And let me tell you, let me tell you, you <laughs> ought to try it. <laughs> I remember uh, my uncle Paddy telling me about. Uh, he was like this going, I I, I saw that whole uh, that gay bar now and how how they stitched up. That fella, they got him drunk behind, and they were like, I didn't take money from nobody. And I tell you, Gabe Byrne knew exactly what he was walking himself into, and he walked in with his eyes closed because he was half fucking steamed. And I remember my uncle was really miffed about it, but I don't know if he was miffed because he got stitched up or because your man was taking brown envelopes like old Ray Burke who sold off the fucking Carob gas line fields. Brown finger job, says Mr. Baker. It's not easy looking after three houses, hey? That's dead true. Those brown envelope stories are dead true. Oh man, wouldn't you wouldn't you love to get a couple of them? Wouldn't you wouldn't you love a couple of fucking uh, a couple of nice brown envelopes just left under the door from an anonymous sender? And just be like, Shh, I say no more, boys. Oh, oh, come yeah. here. Oh, As Kevin Murphy said, 5,000 euros in brown envelope job. You wouldn't be needing to get fucking coal for the fireman. You'd just be slapping the fucking gas on. 2942. Leo Baradka never paid a fucking cent for gas. Callum, Callum Evans says, I never took money off anyone. Proceeds to take money off everyone. Who was your man, the lad up in Monaghan, who was like this going, and I love it. I love the money. I love it. Says, uh, you know, oh, Gerald yeah. Adams. Yeah. What, what was his name? His name was Fuck oh, MEP. What was his name? Flaming Grill is working. Hey, by the way, what was the crack with Ming Flanagan uh, typing? What was it? Uh, Sersha McHugh. Uh, he was hacked or something. Oh, he was hacked, was he? Yeah. yeah. How, 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 how was that? Uh, 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 apparently, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, Ming Flanagan. Look into it, though. 
How are you doing? Twitter. I, I, yeah, I, I had to mean, fucking know. He, he confused Google with he Twitter. Phoenix, huh? <laughs> he confused Google with Twitter. <laughs> He played for the Phoenix Suns. He played for the Phoenix Suns. He's doing the Zoom call with, with like the... No pants on. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no he pants on. He's not even sitting at a desk or anything. He's on the bed in the laptop like five feet away from him. Do you know, the funny thing is about Ming, right? About was It's nearly eight years ago that he got nominated. And uh, everyone was like, come on, we'll fucking vote Ming in. Ming will change stuff, man. I'm telling you, Ming's is gonna he's going to make wonders in the fucking galaxy. And uh, and like he was, look, I went into an old file room today and I've been looking at files and I tell you this, I couldn't take any photographs and all they give you is a pen and some notes. And that was about the last we heard of Ming. But uh, I, I do like it the way, uh, the way <laughs> he was, I don't know, that, that, that Saoirse McHugh thing, because apparently he did, a, he put a post up uh, defending her. I don't know what it was about. And uh, <laughs> next thing, uh, Photos of Saoirse McHugh, skinny dipping. It was like I, 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 I like See, I've, that. I've seen the picture. Is there pictures of it? Is there? Is, is right? Yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on the Guardian. The Guardian published it. Really? It's like when the when the beach and knuckle came back. Yeah, the Guardian published it. Straight to incognito mode, anyway. Oh, it's oh. on the Guardian. Uh, she was there with her boyfriend. And by the way, that's my cousin Suzanne. Who? The, co the cousin or um? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Hey, I, I tell you what, the boyfriend is in the boyfriend's in good shape, man. He's got some nice definition around his shoulder blades job. Hey, and he's got a great arse. <laughs> There's a lovely bit of arse work going on there. And that, and that he, picture. He, 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 he'd be fucking no aid, no shape, I tell you. Hey. Oh, that lad had crack a walnut between his cheeks any given Monday. Oh, did you see? Oh, did, you see did you see Aiden O'Shea on uh, Marching in the Shed? What, 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 was, what was Aiden O'Shea doing? Marching in the Shed with his girlfriend. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, nimble, nimble as fuck, hey. What, what's uh, Mar 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 Marty in the Shed? Uh, it's on uh, RT Player. I found you know what Owen Calcum was doing that. Marcy Morrissey interviewing randomers. What was 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 um uh, was Colgan on Marty Morrissey's show? Was he? No, no, no. Colgan had his own show on the RT player. Marty Morrissey had his own show. All oh, right. On, on the first episode, he was on the Frost 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 has his uh had his interview with Marty or Marty Morrissey. He interviewed uh, Aidan O'Shea. Had the girlfriend on, and they done this uh, kind of workout. And it was sexy as fuck. Oh yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. It, it, it's funny. Um. For, um I was once in uh, Rua. It's a great restaurant in Castle Bar, and I was I was going down the stairs on the way out, and Aidan O'Shea yeah, was on the way up. And the two of us stopped on the stairs and were like, "Fair fucks," kept walking. That was it. Steve, huh? Uh, Steve fucking Marty Morrissey in like a Supermax and Ennis ones. Oh, oh, was, was he steamed? I didn't have a curry <laughs> chips. He's so fucking pussy, though. He's trying to chat up all the young ones. Well, look, look, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mind the schlep of Morrissey. You wouldn't want to capitalise on all that. I heard he was with eight shit. women one night. Size of his head. <laughs> <laughs> He's like fucking Mr. Potato Head. He's that forehead, no. Oh shit. He, 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 hey, did you ever watch that? Did you ever watch uh, Nick Tuck the thing there years ago? Do you know your man who was playing Doctor Doom in the in the in the Fantastic Four movies? He 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 kind of has the same kind of eyebrows, like they've just been fucking stuck on with an old glue gun. Looked in a sleep by an Asian woman. Fucking Martin Morris has eyebrows. The creator Jason Citron is a bad egg, according to Kevin Murphy. Who's Jason Citron? I'll have to fucking. Check this one. Jason Orange. Jason Orange. Did Morrissey fucking eyebrows or something? Because and he was so happy with it back in the nineties. He's let the one tag go do the same every night. Down in grills, working on your order. Why did you run, boys? This is King getting left, you know. But I'm probably right. Anyway, uh, Marky Morrissey, he's like. His entire kind of fucking face, and if you hit like randomize on like oblivion character create. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. 
another player of that game that I know to me. Yeah. Your man who created Glee, an American horror story, he's a weird fucking dude, man. Ryan Murphy. Check him out. Yes, he is. Like, he ruins everything, I feel like. Yeah, he's a fucking weird looking dude, man. Let's even get you. He's just a weird looking dude. Oh, was he a nip tuck as well, was he? I'd say he's fucking nipped a few tucks in his time. Don't know what that means. He's like the fucking Aldi version of Jeff Bezos. He's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good, dis- that's a good comparison. <laughs> the Aldi so, version. He's so salty and you can't resist taking more. He's a fucking... Tell you what, let's, we can slap fucking bears off all of one, but I, I tell you now, a corn gets up and chickens and ten roach books are too fun to be anywhere else, like, you know... Uh, we got hey we got we got a call. Uh, Strike Burger has asked an interesting question. Uh, so what do you boys think of McGregor boxing again? Uh, I think he's going to make a great few bob out of it. He's going to be great at publicising it, and everyone's going to be hooked to it. And I'd say he's probably going to he's Manny Pacquiao. He, I'd say it'll be Pacquiao will get that. The, the, the rest of the rest of Snow is a shanger. <laughs> yeah. As but, long as he keeps it in the ring this time and not like at you know at the back of some outfit in his head, fine. <laughs> or, or, or throwing a fuck, or throwing a fat and pallet truck at the bus. It might be slow behind the fucking yokes, but it's Pacquiao fighting McGregor, is it? Because if it's a boxing match, Pacquiao is back in No mother. Bad in the ring. Shit said Pacquiao is back in the ring. I think Flame and Grill are really working on my orders. It's just a scam. Who? Who, who are we ordering off? Is it Uber Eats or Just Eats? So, like, you who, go uh, with Just Eats, obviously. Like, is, is McGregor fighting Pacquiao? Is that a thing, lad? He or? is. Actually, what's the crack with uh, with Tyson and Holyfield? Because uh, uh, when's that set to go ahead? It's, no, it's not Holyfield, man. It's Tyson and... Um, Tyson versus Tyson Fury. Fury. That'd be fucking brilliant. Tyson versus Tyson. Yeah, imagine oh, that. Hey, but it'd be nice to see Clash of the Tysons. <laughs> Clash of the Tysons. Mike Tyson is going to fight the fella soon. Who's he fighting? Roy Jones Jr., according to Callum Evans. Sorry, some, someone just said Clash of the Morrisons. Uh, <laughs> Go on, man. Could it, <laughs> look, why, why is the real Mike Tyson is fighting Roy Jones Jr.? That's coming up like that's going to be a, a match like, you know? But I'd like to see Tyson Fury versus Mike Tyson as well. That'd be gas. <laughs> so, hey. well, 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 I guess someone just said uh, a Clash of the Morrissey's Marty Morrissey versus Morrissey from the Smiths. <laughs> 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 and the winner gets to play. <laughs> I don't see one where it's like uh, Morrissey from the Smiths versus Robert Smith. Rick Taylor versus Rick Thorn. What about Morrissey versus Morrissey with that Neil Morrissey from. Rick is dead. Is Rick Thorn dead? Yeah, he died. Hey, I'm not sure you're here. Oh, fuck, take my arm caught him some sort of. Of course. I saw him in my arm. Tyson was supposed to be fighting a bull shark, apparently. Yeah. Martin Maloney. Yes. Mark Morrison. Mark Morrison. Oh, my pizza's on the way. Oh, you lucky bastard, man. You see, the the, the, the oh, takeaways are a bit shy pizza. here in Sweden. Jedward versus Jedward. Get the, uh, the fermented mackerel on the pizza, then that's in Sweden, right? Uh, hey, hey, lads, what was your opinion on the Jedward interview on the Late Late Show? Because Late Late Show seems to be getting people like Blind Boy, Brezzy, uh, Al Porter and Jed were done just to talk about how they feel down in the dumps and everyone's like this going, oh my God. Oh, oh mental Sorry. health. Mental, mental, mental health. health. Fuck, I wish I yeah. knew the They career. seem sound. Like, no. like, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm billionaires, but no mental health problems. They <laughs> seem sound, no? Can, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, can, yeah, we, can we get, can we get one, at, one at a time, lads? They've heard they have 100 quid. They're not millionaires. Who? Jedward? Hundred pound modern iPhone. Now they're like big in Germany. Lads, lads, lads. Lads, one, one, one at a time, please, because it's it's just lads shouting over each other. Um, <laughs> I was I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, some. Yeah, they wouldn't know about hard times, man. They wouldn't know about. How do you know? Are they in a robot? They're sound. 
because they're, because they're on TV yeah. with the fucking they're bleach in the hair. They don't know about that being able to afford a fucking sausage roll from a supermax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'll, 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 can, so. can I can I can I can I tell you something about an age reject? Conor McGregor talks about how we came from bad times. Conor McGregor lives in the same town as Jedward. He probably lives in the same estate. And, and, he, and, he, and he's saying he's coming from hard times. Four bedroom house sure. in Lurken. I heard, I heard Jedward were his sparring partners back in the day. He used to take the two of them on. It's <laughs> <laughs> universe and four. Two fucking two, two fucking two and one, all right. But it wasn't in the fucking ring. It was in a ring. But not <laughs> John. Oh, man. Marty oh, Morrissey sorry. versus Morrissey sorry. versus sorry. Neil Morrissey from Men Behaving Badly. Now oh, that'd be a fucking great match. <laughs> uh, I was actually I was in the shower yesterday thinking about uh, if Men Behaving Badly was commissioned today, it would probably be called cis white males. Uh, it, was, what, what would it be? It'd be like cis white male sexual misconduct. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was fucking genius. Cis white male sexual misconduct. Right, I'll uh, give you a little bit of an insight to my job. Oh, this, 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 even though it's a public and part of it's going out on the internet, right? And part of my work, right? I do have to tell people off about sexual misconduct and <laughs> sexual harassment. Girls, Panda. I, 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 do, I, do, I do. I do. I do. The girl. There. The girl. The girls were saying right that they do love ringing up men accused of it, and even if it's false, they just love to hear them squirm <laughs> and give them the old. Uh, the old slap on the wrist, the verbal slap on the wrist. It sounds like the witch finder general. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you have been accused of sexual yeah. misconduct. Yeah. Fucking Matthew Hopkins job, is it? How bad? Oh, it's, 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 it's a girl crying. Oh, Sasha's ringing again. He still yeah, hasn't figured like, out. There's only, there. there's only a lot of witch ones going on now. Like, like the, the worst thing for me is, well, like, it's. it's have you, have it's you figured it out, Chad? You know? like, I can say the one thing, right? Sky Sports are going and doing all this shit, right? They had a thing on the night the football in the clubhouse drinking a pint at the game of hockey. They were playing the football, playing the fucking thing about South African apartheid. At the one time, they were shouting about black people should have this and white people should have that. Come on, lads, sure, aren't we all the fucking one people? Fuck it off, let's play sport and drink pints. I don't care what colour no one is. I'm a mixed race man. Why is Sky Sports getting involved? Fuck me, it's only a sport, lads. That's right, imagine staying up all night. Rotting at the mouth because someone is different from you. Like, fuck oh, that shit. God, <laughs> fucking racist cunts like it. And it's getting twisted now, like, it's getting twisted. The ones who don't care about the race are getting called the racists, and the ones who want segregation are getting called fair, like, what? Are getting fuck. called, they, they, they're, they're the anti racists, yes. It's fucking oh, man. Man. Some, some fellow made a class skit about as well. As they would say, lads, I'm pretty sure as it would say out in the Crimea. This is what we call a bollocks chance. Uh, I know a few Crimean men. Crime yeah. yeah, Krim. Krim, they call it. Krim. Did you ever watch... Did you ever praise a crumb from Conan, man? He's a mad bastard. Apparently there's no benefits to him being a follower of his religion and praying to him makes no difference. Krom laughs at your sky god. Uh, he sounds like every fucking god I ever heard <laughs> The extra tension, God. Yeah, extra extra tension. Uh, Law and Order. Do you uh, were you fans of Law and Order? The uh, uh, as as uh, Kevin Murphy said, Law and Order, cis white male division. But um, yeah, the uh, what, like what, what does cis stand for? Because I mean, a lot of this shite is just fucking uh, pseudoscience. Yeah. Can, it, can, can, can I, I? I actually know. Brilliant. It probably sounds because it's real people. It's probably crack is sound. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll actually explain to you. It's very, very oh, fucking is. boring, right? Go on. Well, that's very fucking boring. How they figured it out. Yeah. How did, the origins of this word. It comes from chemistry. There's trans mm -hmm. polymers and cis polymers, and the, these activists thought that oh, cis oh, is the opposite of we, trans. We would be the, right. And we would be we would be the strong plastic, and they'd be the the weak ones that break because there's too many different polymers.
Um, they, 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 they just saw it. They, 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 they just saw it. was arrested. And that's the Italian, as the man who was arrested back in 2012 for a wardrobe for chemicals. I know well the fucking polymers buy it. And the fucking, the more elements is in it, the weaker it is. And that's got nothing to do with anything. Right. So, so, it, so it, 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 it just, it was basically wrong from uh, thinking this must be the opposite oh, ribbon for the end of the world. That's what I mean. I, I always hear it says. I mean, think of like the fucking the bad guys from like the Star Wars prequels, the fucking battle droids and all. This is they are called it's, 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 it's like South Park done the best because they've done the city. They basically made characters yeah, that made the city. Totally, that was that. That's for me. It's for me. It sounds for track is sound because it's the people who's been going on the same way we've always been going on since we've been about since the eighties. Lads who watch Arnie so movies. <laughs> There's no one subversive. Like, crack is sound. Crack isn't subversive. Crack is sound. All the CIS, which is also all the ex-Soviet states, would say that. Well, then the CIS come over and fuck with you. Know what I mean? It's a bit of a Spanish way, but I think that's Canadian. Well, you know what I mean? Well, come here. Look, I'm gonna. We're at two minutes and five, so I'm gonna wrap it up now, everybody. But uh, tomorrow, I might do a. Um, I might do a stream or I might do a podcast with Jamie J and uh, and I might do another one of these touches tomorrow, especially if Jimmy Baz is locked down in, in, in Atley Pool. Let off some steam, Bennett. But uh, we might talk about Arnie movies tomorrow and just have a bit of crack. Uh, John Joe McGonagall says, and this is 2020 where humanity is at depressing. Uh, to answer that question, John Joe, I actually thought we'd be living in like I, I thought there'd be brilliant shit happening it turns it turns out that most of our technology has been used to make the place a fucking misery um mm. so i mean i i just i thought we were going to be going from strength to strength but it seems uh I, I, you know it seems if if you have no external like for example a lot of this shit comes out of the states and the states has been the fucking top dog since world war Two job and now the states have basically dominated all other um you know, like in rivals, it, they basically, they don't have anyone to, to beef against because they're a top dog. So it starts, they start beefing within, I think. So uh, I think, and, and anything, anything shitty that comes out of States usually fucking makes its way over to the rest of the world. Then lads, it's, it's fucking shite, like I, Buzzfeed and all that, you know, just, I remember seeing a, a video of this, this woman who had like a, she was dressed up as a lad with a fucking cool hat, like Pharrell Williams. And she was just sitting like this on the couch, on, on go, look at this, mansplaining or manspreading. And I, and I just watched it. It was like, comments it turned off. And I was like, you got me that time. I remember she was like sitting on the fucking train with like her feet up using the other seat as like a fucking yeah, just, leg rest at one point. Yeah, but, but t- like oh, acting yeah, like yeah, a yeah, dickhead. Yeah, like. Yeah, but you ever, you ever seen the ones with the, with the things dangling between the legs and they're like, oh, I feel so like I would human. But uh, just to mention John Drummond Gondo, I like you're thinking, and I don't at the same time. What's this? Because he's probably right. Who's who's this? Uh, about about uh, the lockdown shouts the comedy mentioned. All oh, right. Who who was right? What was what was mentioned about the lockdowns? Uh, you, oh, hell, you put me on the spot here. Oh, so, 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 sorry. Like brown upside down. I liked it, but I didn't at the same time. John Joe McGonagall, you're a sound lad. Prison planet, the digital prison. Do you know what? I, I have to say something, right? I remember 10 years ago, uh, Jim Core was on the late, uh, was on the Brendan O'Connell show, and he's like, so was Jim. That, <laughs> and, and then, was that was, was that what my tweak? <laughs> Zip up your Mickey. But there was, there was, uh, in, in fairness, like, your man, Brendan O'Connell had a good chat with him. He's like, so what do you believe? Like, do you believe there was, like, controlled destinations and the towers and stuff? I would, yeah. But uh, he was talking, uh, Cor mentioned something about, like, we're going to be put into a kind of, like, in- inescapable technological prison, which kind of reminded me of what John Joe McGonagall said. And if you look at it, like, they're doing away with cash, right? They're doing away with cash. And that yeah. just means... They, 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 it just they're squeezing everything out of the fucking working man. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can't and like if you go to a bank in Ireland now, it's it's you have a machine that's supposed to be, uh, or you go into a supermarket and, and like it's it's they're getting this, they're maximizing profits for the big fucking boys, the the, the guys who own all these uh, companies. Mm. 
but then like the fucking the the, the, the min the, the minnows like ourselves like we're getting fucking you know squashed and then you know you go into yeah. a you go into the bank and they need someone standing beside the machine in the bank so you can put your money in yourself you know and uh yeah. So if you do someone a favor, like you know, I get about twenty quid cash in the claw, but it's hard to do that now. Oh man, you know what? I'll, I'll, buy, I'll, I'll send it to you on Monzo. I'll send it to you by the bank. Now. Yeah, forex or um, and, and, and we'll we, yeah. we, we, we pay it by contactless. Oh yeah, contactless. Yeah, they have, See, they have a record of everything there. Cash in ages, actually. Yeah, I, I don't carry cash around with me now because I don't like carrying wads around with me. But, but, uh, but you know, interestingly, yeah. do, do you remember that uh, laser card advert years ago? And and here's how they so, they sold it to me. There was a man walking down the street. It was like a kind of a cartoon. It was like he's he's walking with his laser card, which was like the beginning of the debit cards. And uh, it was like you don't even have cash on you, so you can't be robbed. And then there's a robber going like this, and the car, the card is gone. Ha ha! I've got my laser card. But uh, now now the crack. It's. Uh, I don't know. I, I reckon. I reckon all this Bitcoin uh, is 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 a fucking. It's all to try and get people onto crypto, which is bollocks, man. I reckon the only way around it it's is a bubble. It, bubble. Stay away from it. It's a bubble, Wait, yeah. It's proven, like. Look, 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 the, the, the conglomerates, of, the real financial conglomerates, don't want to score to digital currency because they they're not, they're not paid. They want us to go, keep on going the way we're going with the whole banking system now. Pound sterling, dollars, euro, fucking forints, everything, you know what I'm saying? But they want it so that they don't have to be print, printing the currency. It's easy to track when it's digital, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's easy. The only reason we have cash now, boys, is so we can buy an ice bag of booster or a fucking few gram. Do you know what I mean? It's only yeah. real to carry the money. That's the only reason now. Everything else is all digital. That's yeah. why they go digital. Man. Yeah, but, and then they can legalize weed easily. And then reap in the profits, you know what I mean? Can, 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 can I just talk about money traceability? Yeah. Because um, I used to assess uh, people's bank statements in the previous job. Steve, Stephen, I might tell everyone now, I'll adopt him. Stephen is one of the major players in the Fanny and Fight. The whole, the whole, the whole um, 2018 crash, that was me. <laughs> I was responsible over the whole fucking lot. So I'll tell you what, I, I, I would assess bank statements and we get bank statements submitted to us and I kind of go through with a bit of a two comb and you'd see the Netflix logo for their Netflix debit account for Tesco's, the Tesco's logo for their Tesco. Every fucking logo is next to uh, their transaction. But, but there was one person now who submitted their bank statements and was just like transactions between friends. They were splitting bills, but it just raised an eyebrow because they were putting bullshit, uh, bullshit into the into the uh, transaction descriptions that was coming up and I was registering and I was reading it and it was like anal beads and things like that. And I was like, what? I was that like talking? It was like. I was like, no, it's just like friend, uh, friends, uh, friends, 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 friends paying for their half of the takeover or something. And they're just oh, right. right then, right then, fucking handle beads and things like that. Well, the it's thing like, is, you, you, know, you have a thing over here in Sweden, lads, called Swish. And basically, Pussy Master, uh, Pussy uh, Master 3000 was the only one. Pussy Master 3000. Uh, uh, but uh, the thing is, you have this thing over here called Swish, which is, it's like, it's instant money trans. Uh, I suppose it was basically the pre. Uh, precursor to Revolut. Um, but basically, I, I think Revolut's fucking brilliant. Man. I mean, like beforehand, the amount of pissing about you'd have to do to, to transfer money. Would, but I think Revolut, are they an Estonian company? So they have that weird kind of like, they're kind of, they're their own they're their own setup over there or something. I thought, I thought they were German, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, N24 are German. N24, that was the other one, yeah. Uh, I, I just find, um, you know, what's the alternative? If you can't give someone a bit of fucking coin, people will be going around just buying, like, well, what do you need the money for? It's like, oh, I, need, I need to get a, a set of floodlights for the garden. It's like, right, you do this job for me, and I get you the floodlights. And then, you know, there'll be just lads just, but uh, I need that Dewalt fucking Kango drill. If you can do that, I'll do a good week for you. So the people are just going to be start to barter next. They'll probably put the fucking mockers on that then. They'll be like, what did you do with that drill? Where's the drill now? Have you seen the drill? Give me the drill. 
and uh, send me pictures of the drill yeah. now, quick. And I'd be allowed to send in like Google images of fucking Makita and fucking consoles and stuff. Didn't, didn't the fellow in Ireland, like, uh, he was a revenue customer, he, he woke up one day, just checked his balance, and he had like, you know, 100 million in it. Jesus. Someone... Because, of, because of a glitch. Because of a glitch. Oh, fuck. Uh, I guess what, they, what you... they took it back, did they? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, sorry, I obviously did. But, but it, no, he was the other sort. He rang them up and went public with it. But what I would do is that I would just go out and fucking try and spend it all like yacht, yes, please. Apartments yeah. in Dunleary, yes, yes, please. I love that. And, and then it's like, hands Porsche over, garage. It's not yours. There's no well and good in a fucking Revolut come with the business a week yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, it's like, no, nah, not going to happen, mate. <laughs> Give it up. Jade Elba said, was that Stateside's bank statement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, do, you know, do you know what? Fucking, if there's any hackers here that can infiltrate an online bank, fucking give Stateside a million quid. Oh, geez. I, I can imagine like the, the investments. I'm going to buy a pool hall and call it the El Stateside Dolls. I'm just going to pack it full of Philippine women. Yeah, I listen, 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 like, right, Filipino women are lovely. I, I have much respect for them. They're beautiful. Of all the women on the Asian continent, the Filipinos are uh, pretty fucking nice. Sorry, sorry to bake in there, boy. The, 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 the Thai women are good crack. Thai, Thai women. So, uh, Martin, we'll, uh, we'll podcast over the weekend or something, and maybe we'll catch you tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be nice, nice to get you on the podcast as well, Jimmy, for the crack. The good old. Uh, <laughs> the good... You're free on Sunday, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll be uh, free. We'll sign it. on the phone, right? Uh, yeah, I referenced I, that fucker last, last year, so get that lad in the podcast and just chat for a fucking hour. Who, who is this? This is fucking. Which lad was this on the podcast? Jimmy Bars. Oh, G- oh yeah, Jimmy Bars, of course. A- Absolute, as I said in Sweden. Well, look, thanks very much for everyone who stuck around. And uh, like I said, if you want to continue the conversation into the heat of the night, uh, I'll give you the touch now. One sec, I'll give uh, the old Discord again. And, and we have the crack with each other in there. Like the, the channel is open. You can talk away. Has the Viper got himself a Discord as well, has he? Sorry, Marsh. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hit you up on uh, the WhatsApp tomorrow anyway. Sounds a bell, lovely lad. Sounds a bell. Well, look, everyone, thanks very much uh, for sticking around. Give the old thumbs up. And uh, I appreciate the... It was, it was good old crack. And we, we might do another one tomorrow. And I'll tell you this, uh, thanks for everyone who, who sh- uh, put a few quid into the into the coffers and everyone who gave the thumbs up, everyone who's, who stuck around for the entire stream, all the people who joined in, all of you guys for watching as well. Thanks very much. And we'll say have a nice Friday night and watch out for the bad woo there. God bless. Hey, nice meeting you, Martin. Likewise, it was a fucking pleasure. And uh, this, is, this is a nice little dynamic. I'm going to try, as I say, I'm gonna, once I figure out how to get the, uh, the OBS thing on this, I, I'm, I'm saving up to get a better, a, a more powerful computer anyway. And uh, Christian Perez is chatting some big talk about an American secondhand Mac. And we'll see, we'll see what the crack is. Uh, I might... I might go to Windows. Apparently, they, I was talking to a lad the other day who said ASOS Rock. These gaming things are quite strong for that. So we'll see. But we have all, we're getting the gear. We're building the fucking thing. We build it. They will come. Feel the dreams job. You know what I mean? Uh, M. Light Shalaman. <laughs> all right. He was dead the whole time. He was. <laughs> M. Light Shalaman job. <laughs> oh, fucking, hey, fucking Joker job. What's his name? Joaquin Phoenix, man. Phoenix. Phoenix Knights. Listen, I'm going to hit the road. Get onto the old Discord anyway, and you can all chat away into the heat of the night. But that's it. I love you and leave you. Good night and God bless. Our lar sure to the boys. Chat, ah, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Good night and God bless. Take well, care now. Players. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, he's gone. Well,